Good, good afternoon and welcome to today's planning committee meeting. My name is Councillor David Connor and I'm chairing the planning committee meeting here today. I'd welcome those members of the public and press in attendance and those who are watching the live stream of this meeting via YouTube. Whilst this meeting is being held publicly, it is also being streamed via YouTube. Minutes of the meeting will be reduced in the usual way and a recording of the meeting will be available to view on YouTube until such times the minutes are produced. Please be aware that only the audio from the microphones will be captured on the live stream. Therefore, those invited to speak need to ensure their microphones are on when speaking and are as close to you as humanely possible. To enable the meeting to run in an orderly manner, can all present keep their microphones off except when invited to speak? Please ensure that the microphone is turned off when you finish speaking. I would also ask everyone ensures their mobile phones are on silent or turned off for the duration of the meeting. Please be aware that the cameras will be on us at all times during the meeting. With regard to the meeting, I must ask members of the public to refrain from interrupting. Yet the only members of the public allowed to speak are those who have registered to do so. Anyone who speaks must do so in a respectful and a polite manner. Um, it is right there is meaningful discussion about the merits of applications, but we will not allow inappropriate language on person or person personnel attacks on councillors and their beliefs on members of the public or on officers professional advice so we'll quickly move on to agenda item number one and i'd like to ask member services elaine in this case if we have any apologies for absence we've had apologies from councillor mrs mayor and councillor Ms. Gannon is substituting for her Yep, thank you. Um, agenda item number two is to confirm and sign the minutes from the previous meeting of March the 8th. And also, and also apologies from Councillor Scolding. Oh, right. Thank you, Councillor Bursa. Um, right, so with it, agenda item number two is to confirm and sign the minutes from the previous meeting of March the 8th, 2023. Do I have a proposal to approve the minutes? Councillor Bursa, have I got a seconder? Councillor Sutton, so can we have so uh, can we have a show of hands on the on the of the minutes, please? So that looks as though that's more or less unanimous. I think Councillor Cornwall wasn't there last time, were you? So thank you. And nor was Councillor uh, Miss Cannon, but okay. So now we'll go to agenda item number three, which is urgent items. And strange enough, there is some this afternoon. Agenda item number 10 has been withdrawn and with members consent, I will agree. I'll ask that agenda item number eight is moved up the agenda to the first one uh, this afternoon, which is five. So have I got everybody's it's item number five? But it's not yeah, but it's, yeah, from eight to five, isn't it? So have I got everybody's consent for that? Lovely. So we'll go to agenda item number four, which is declarations of interest. Member services will go to each councillor in turn. And can you please state if you have anything to declare in relation to any agenda item discussed this afternoon? Thank you. Councillor Benny. Thank you, Elaine. Um, I attend Chatteris Town Council, but take no part in the planning and no decision making. Also, there are applications this afternoon from Morton and Hall. I do know Matthew Hall. He's done work for me in the past. I've also worked with him with the Growing Venom project with Chatteris Town Council. Councillor Connor. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm a member of March Town Council and I attend and I obviously and attend Doddington Parish Council as elected representative of this council. But I take no part in any planning discussions or voting thereon. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Davis. Um, yes, I'm um, Chairman of um, Wimington Parish Council, um, but I take no part in any um, planning decisions, um, even though I'm present. Thank you. Councillor Mrs French. Member of March Town Council, but take no part in planning application. Councillor Cornwall. Oh, there was me <laughs> thinking you'd forgotten me. Um, 
No, I have nothing, uh, Chairman, except to say that I have received correspondence about item number seven. I think we'll have Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'm a member of the uh, Mainly Parish Council, but take no part in uh, any planning debate there. On item number five, I am a me member of Mainy and Wellney uh, District uh, Drainage Board, of where the applicant is actually on the board, on the board, um, but I don't socialise with him at all. So uh, I feel I'm free to speak on this. Councillor Meekins. Yeah, I'm on Wisbech Town Council. I'm not on the planning committee and take no part in planning decisions there. Councillor Scanland. Um, I'm chairman of uh, planning at Woodsy Town Council um, and agenda item eight came before the council. I will not speak or vote on it, but I uphold the uh, decisions made by the council. Councillor Murphy. Yes, I was in Chatteris Town Council, but do not take any part in the planning matters or applications. And I do know Matthew Hall in the, in the previous of Rowan Finland. Thank you very much. Councillor Purser. So I'm a member of Parks Town Council, but I take no part whatsoever in any of the uh, funding applications. Councillor Sutton. Nothing to declare, Jim. Right, thank you very much for that, um, councillors. We'll now go to the main part of the meeting, the planning applications. For this meeting and going forward, I'll be dealing with the proposal slightly differently. Members do still only make a proposal invite, invited to do so. However, in the interests of time management, I will initially be looking for a proposal to go with officer recommendation. Clearly, if no such proposal is forthcoming or, that, or if that proposal fails, I will be then looking for a proposal to go against the recommendation. Members are reminded that any such proposal should be accompanied by the planning reasons for doing so. So, Councillor Sutton. I'm just, just remembering we did have an email from Mrs. Johnson regarding item seven, so I ought to declare that. Um, I think we all have uh, Mr. Jim. Yeah, so I think so. So I think, thank you, Councillor Sutton. Thank you, Councillor Gorm. I think perhaps we should put an end. We, we've, we've probably all had a, an email uh, from Mrs. Johnson. I think that will save the cover of it. Thank you for that. So now I'll hand over to Nikki Carter to present application FYR 221410F, agenda item number eight. Thank you. So, Nikki, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Agenda item eight is a full application for two single storey, four bed dwellings with garages and formation of a footpath. A similar outline application was granted by Planning Committee in April 2022. The application site is indicated in red on the location plan and aerial photograph. It is located on the southwestern side of White Road, adjoins a recent development through bungalows, and is formed of open agricultural land with a partial hedge alongside White Road. Proposed layout and street scene can be seen on this slide. The dwellings are set back behind the shared access with detached garages set beyond this. A 1.2 metre wide footpath is proposed on the inside of the boundary hedge, linking to the existing access and footpath serving the bungalows to the northwest. The elevations and floor plans for plot one are shown here, and plot two on this slide. The application site is shown on the top photo with views either side of the site on the lower images. The principle of development on this site, including the proposed footpath location, was established by the granting of outline planning permission by planning committee in April 2022. The design is, is considered in keeping with the recently constructed bungalows adjoining and there are no issues in relation to residential amenity, highway safety or flood risk. As such, is recommended to grant this application. Right, thank you, Nikki. We have one speaker on this application. I'd now like to invite Lee Bevins, of course, he's the agent, 
to make his presentation to the committee when you're nicely seated, you've got five minutes to do so. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chair and members. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. Um, I'm glad that the scheme is being recommended for planning approval, and we've worked carefully with the case officer to achieve a scheme that is acceptable. As members will be aware, this scheme is very similar to a previously consented outline application for the site approved in April last year. The proposal for two bungalows on the site follows the principles of the consented outline application scheme, but more detail has been included in this full application with the designs taking some reference from the adjacent bungalows with good quality materials proposed and additional soft landscaping to improve the biodiversity on the site. The proposed two bungalows and detached garages ensure that no significant overlooking or overshadowing is created between the dwellings or adjacent dwellings with ensuite windows having obscure glazing where they're located on the driveway side. The bungalows have good levels of private amenity and are well set back from White Road which is in keeping with the adjacent development previously completed by the applicant, with each plot sitting fairly centrally, centrally to its plots. We discussed the highway design of the scheme at some length with the highway officer, and the position of the access, sight lines and footpath provision were discussed at some length to ensure consistency with the adjacent development of two bungalows and maintaining pedestrian and vehicle safety. We were advised that a 1.2 metre wide footpath inside the proposed new hedge planting would be acceptable, and that this still offers connection back in a northwest direction into East Tree Village. There is nothing beyond the southeastern site boundary, so there is not a need to extend the footpath any further than, in, than indicated. The case officer has confirmed that the scheme is acceptable, noting that the scheme complies with the relevant policies of the Federal and Local Plan 2014, and the applicant is happy with the proposed conditions recommended by the case officer. I therefore ask members to go with the case officer's recommendation and approve this application. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Bevins. Members, any questions or clarifications for Mr. Bevins, please? No, thank you very much. Members, questions, clarifications, officers? Anybody got any of those? No. Right, so. Them. So thank you, everybody. I'd like to invite members to debate the item in respect of the material planning considerations relevant to the application. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. So basically, we're in debate. Councillor Sutton, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I remember this coming um, in front of us in, in, in the outline, and uh, it was passed against officer's recommendation, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, and I, I think I voted against it because I thought it was just a step too far out of the village. But the bottom line is, uh, you know, it was democratically approved and I, I see no reason why uh, this can't go through and see no problem with it other than I was against it originally. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I totally agree with uh, Councillor Sutton, and that's dangerous for the first one. <laughs> Members were still in debate. If anybody would like to add to that, no. Okay, I'm closing the debate then. Uh, Members, do you have any questions for officers before we go to the vote? No. Oh, Councillor French at the last moment. Can I just ask about the, the footpath where the town council are objecting until there's a, a decent footpath? So they're proposing a 1.2 metre wide footpath on the inside of the hedge, which is consistent with the previous permission mm -hmm. and also consistent with the two bungalows to the north. So they, I believe they were originally supposed to have a footpath along the roadside, but had a variation of condition to amend that to a footpath on the inside of the hedge, which was considered acceptable. OK, thanks. Any more questions for officers at all? No? OK. So I should be initially looking for a proposer to go with officer recommendation to grant planning permission. Have I got a proposer on that yeah. to grant planning permission? Yeah. Councillor Sutton, have I got a seconder? 
Councillor French. So we've got a proposal to go with officer recommendation to approve. Chairman, you missed the point. Councillor Davis proposed it. Sorry about that, Councillor Davis. Um, so I've got proposed. <laughs> okay. So I've got a proposer to go with officer recommendation to recommend approval on this, proposed by Councillor Davis, secondly by Councillor French. All those in favour of that, please. I think that's unanimous, isn't it? No, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't take part. So that's unanimous. That application has been approved. Thank you. Sorry about that. That morning. So we'll move back to the agenda item. So we'll go to agenda item number five, FYR 23 stroke 00720. Um, Nikki, again, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Firstly, may I draw members' attention to an update report which has been circulated. Agenda item five is an outline application for five dwellings and the formation of a footpath on the western side of Bodafen Road. A similar application was refused by planning committee in September 2021, and several of those reasons for refusal remain. A further application was due to be considered by planning committee in December last year, again recommended for refusal, however the application was withdrawn before the meeting. The application site is indicated in red on the location plan and aerial photograph. The site is situated to the north of the main settlement of Mainy on the eastern side of Vodafone Road and is within an agricultural field and open countryside. The indicative layout is shown here, noting that only access of Vodafone Road is permitted. Photo 1 is facing south towards the station with the site on the left hand side. Photo 2 shows the site as existing and photo 3 facing north with the site on the right hand side. Photo 4 faces south towards the station with the location of the proposed footpath on the right and photo 5 faces north towards the site with the footpath over in the car park on the left. The principle of development in this location is considered unacceptable as it is beyond the established settlement of Maney. The development would erode the openness of this countryside location and result in an urbanisation which would have a significant detrimental impact on the character of the area. Highways have raised queries regarding the viability and acceptability of the works required of Fodderfen Road, which remain unresolved. The site lies in flood zone three, the highest risk of flooding, and is considered to fail both the sequential and exception tests. And insufficient information has been submitted to enable the council to undertake the habitat regulations assessment. The recommendation is therefore one of refusal, consistent with the previous decision of this council regarding development on this site. Yep, thank you once again, Nikki. We have two speakers on this application. I'd like to invite Robert Sears, he's the applicant, and Peter Humphreys, of course, he's the agent, to make their presentation to the committee. You have five minutes between you. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you uh, for letting us come and speak to you. Um, I'm hoping that if successful, uh, my daughter will be able to have one of the plots. Uh, she is at the moment taking more responsibility and will very soon take over uh, the responsibilities of what I do on the, on the farm as I'm obviously getting to that age. Uh, she currently is involved in uh, doing the farm accounts and it would be so well be very useful for her to be living obviously on the farm and near the station. She has young children and for them to be able to go to school in either direction. Her husband is a teacher and uh, that will help also with that. So to me, it is all about um, future proofing and for future generations. I'd also like to mention what we're doing on the farm with regard to uh, the environment. My cousin over there has given me this to read as I obviously find it uh, quite complicated. Um, we are currently in a mid-tier scheme and we are taking 240 acres out of food production approximately one sixth of our total farm for the next five years. Uh, this land will be sown with five different sorts of seed mixes, including autumn sown bumblebird mix and winter bird food. 
Uh, these will provide an all year round source of food and cover for the likes of tree sparrows, corn buntings, and bird chicks, insects such as butterflies, bumblebees, and hoverflies, and will provide pollen and nectar for pollinators. To complement this, we have so far planted 2.3 miles of hedge, hedgerows, mainly hawthorn, blackthorn, and hazel. In the coming winter, we are planting 74 hedgerow trees, mainly oaks, but also other native species. Uh, these will, along with the hedging, come to provide shelter, food, nesting sites, and songposts. Thank you very much. This application is for five executive style plots on the edge of Maine. The market shows there's a distinct lack of such plots. This application, if approved, will help address this situation. Planning Officer's executive summary states that the site is beyond the established settlement of Maine. Yes, it is on the edge of the village, but adjacent to housing, opposite housing, plus almost opposite a new development of the station car park. This development itself has changed the character of this area um, and was a Fenland District Council own application. Also, the uh, plots are within the, the access to these plots are within the village sign for Maine. It's also noted that from the previous refusal uh, for this application, members agreed that the site was in fact within the village. This application will help secure and future proof the Sayers farming enterprise for generations to come. The site is actually closer to the school and village hall than the proposed allocations on the emerging local plan at Fallow Corner for some 29 dwellings by three, some 300 metres. This site is in fact well related to uh, the existing farm and the spatial characteristics of the village. Also the proximity of the station should not be underestimated and undoubtedly will be used by the residents of these dwellings. NPPF prioritizes new development with access to significant public transport hubs, such as rail stations provided as long as to provide a long-term sustainable transport option. This application also proposes a new footpath link for this development to the new rail station plus the village beyond. Whilst it is within a flood zone three, I would respectfully refer you to Fenland Council's own application in Parson Drove, F stroke YR 22, 1187 stroke FTC at Parson Drove, which was also in a flood zone three, Fenland Council's land, written by Fenland Council officers, recommended for approval. Quite a complex discussion. If you have any questions, please ask afterwards because I can't get it in this speech. I have written to David Rowan separately on that. And I think it's fair to say that. Um, 30 uh, seconds. Pardon? We're looking for Fenland Council applications to be treated the same as our applications. Um, we are prepared to give a further SWAN report if needed, but the uh, Wild Frontier say that there are, the results of the habitat survey and death study indicate that the site uh, is unsuitable for ho hooper swans, and there are no known records of such species um, using the site or nearby fields. I would therefore, uh, Mr. Chairman, request that the application is considered and uh, supported by members. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite members to put questions to Mr. Sears or Mr. Humphrey. If you'd like to ask a question or some clarification of any kind, please raise your hand and indicate who you would like to speak to. So, <laughs> Councillor Marks. Thank you, Mr. Sears. I live within 250 metres of that. I've never known it flood, have you? Bear, bearing in mind we've had flooding down the other end of the village and quite dramatic flooding. Have you ever known that field flood? Never. Okay. Councillor Benny and then Councillor Davis, thank you. Mr. Um, I, I say this is in flood zone three, but I'm assuming, and I'm sure you will confirm either way, 
that um, all mitigation measures will be taken to safeguard the properties and homes of people if this is approved today. Sorry, I didn't catch all that. that was... I'll try again. So, my apologies. Yeah. Anyway, I'll get nearer to the microphone. Thank you. Um, I'm sure you can confirm either way. Uh, this is in flood zone three, but you will be taking full mitigation measures either to build the land up or come up with some scheme that will enable this to safeguard the properties if such uh, an application or this, if this application is approved today. Thank you. Yes, we, we will. Um, and what I've done, I've proposed to the planning officer, albeit late in the day, because it was when I found the um, the application at Parson Drove, we are proposing uh, similar mitigation measures to what Fenland Council proposed on their own scheme, which was supported by officers. Um, in, on that application, there were two alternative plots uh, and the planning officer at uh, uh, the uh, report states there were two building plots available. However, these were somewhat smaller than the proposed plots and will not facilitate the size of dwelling uh, which they wanted, hence the sequential test was passed. Uh, we've got five plots. We have done our own sequential test and proved that we have passed the sequential test. We will also be adding mitigation measures as Fenland Council did on their application. Uh, and so really what we're looking for um, is this level plan field so that we can provide exactly what Fenland do. And uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be uh, get an approval on this site, even though it's in a flood zone three. Thank you very much, Mr. Humphreys, for your information. The floor is yours, Councillor Davies. Um, yeah, I don't mind um, who, who answers the question, but there was, um, you were quite keen to mention that your daughter would be living in one of the properties, but so that's only one, that still leaves four as uh, up for commercial sale. So um, I don't think it's, it's immaterial that the daughter's actually going to live in one. So your question is, you know, why five as opposed to one? Yeah. Uh, obviously, with regard to doing the works, the, the pavement and, and the roadways, there is cost involved in doing that. And, and, and I obviously, my, my son-in-law being a teacher, as I'm sure many of you will know, doesn't earn uh, that amount of money. And I want to help my daughter and, and certainly the next generation uh, with regard to uh, the expense of building a new home and starting a new home with their family in Maine. To do that, of course, it's helpful for me and my cousin who I farm with, um, that, we, that we have five houses and, 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 and put some of that money towards, towards those costs. Thank you. Councillor French. Thank you. Uh, I noticed on this site, um, the roads, is 40 to 60. Have you considered reducing the speed limit there? We haven't, sorry, we haven't considered, but we, if supported and uh, members would like us to do that, we can certainly go through that process and speak to uh, Paris Council to try and get uh, their support to reduce it. Okay, I mean, obviously, uh, you're looking at executive homes. Um, but I understand the speed is quite bad around there. So I think you know, it, it would help on health and safety, et cetera, if that reduction was. I, I, I think from experience and going to the site, um, um, vehicles certainly slow up as they approach the rail line. Um, so it's not just like a straight, fast road. Um, that does act as a, uh, as a deterrent. I'm just thinking of when the station is, if it's not already opened, I understand there was a hiccup with the CCTV cameras, if that's why uh, it's not been opened. But certainly uh, on that side of Maine, um, that I'm assuming that the station car park was in Flood Zone 3 as well? It was Flood Zone 3 because um, I, I tried some planning applications um, for uh, another client some time ago, but uh, we decided to sell to uh, Fenlon Council. That, that's, where, that's where the car park is, is it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Councillor Miscanlon, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I noticed in one of the pictures there's the deep restricted speed sign. Is that close to the entrance? And if it is, are you going to enter into negotiations with Cambridgeshire Highways 
to move it to a more appropriate position so it safeguards the people exiting from this or from any other property. Well, we, we would be more than happy to take that as a condition. Okay, that's a good point. Um, anybody else got any questions for Mr. Sears, or Mr. Humphreys? No, no. Thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> Members, questions to officers, please. Councillor Marks. Thank you. It refers here to insufficient information being submitted to enable local planning authority to undertake habitat regulation assessment. It's basically a brown field. That why do we need to go to all that length when there is really very little habitat there? That was at the request of Natural England, her statutory consultee. So we're obliged to take on board their advice, and they have said that basically they. Um, Sorry about this, I'm just trying to read a bit of information. That in their view, in the absence of disk re records, it's not possible to determine with sufficient certainty that the site and surrounding area is not regularly used by uh, special protection area birds and can therefore be excluded from the ooze washes functionally linked land. So we're taking that on their advice. Would we have not had the same done for the, our car park? I'm not aware that that was the case all raised in that particular occasion. Which is literally across the road. And for you, Chairman, we don't have that information to hand. So we, it's one of those ones to, to quote probably uh, somebody in the uh, government in America. We, we can't um, say that, yes, there was the information or no, there wasn't. So. We, we can supply that subsequently, but in a way it's irrelevant because the Natural England have made it quite clear to us that this site needs to be subject to the habitat regs assessment process, and that's not something that we can ignore. It has to be done. If we did ignore it and if plan permission were to be granted, then we would be doing so knowing here and now that that decision is unlawful. So I would advise strongly against doing that. Okay. Councillor Marks, would you like to come back? Could, could we not make it a condition of planning? Um, you, you couldn't because you're not guaranteed to be able to pass that test and you will have agreed the principle of development through the grant of planning consent. Did you want to come back again? You're, you're happy, okay. Councillor French. Yeah, uh, j just an observation. I mean, <clears throat> I did hear Mr. Seal said 240 acres uh, that's going to be planted with um, wild seeds, hedgerows put back in, trees put in there. In all the years that I've sat in this planning committee, I have never heard of anybody willing to spend so much money and effort um, to do so. And it does concern me the fact that Fenman did get the planning permission for the uh, car park. Um, I'm, I'm just confused why um there's there's so much um anti uh, on this development um I'm just baffled yeah so this is referred to in the report so that they've advised that uh, that would be undertaken in relation to the government's country stewardship mid-tier scheme and as such that would be undertaken irrespective of the application and would not be relevant to this development yeah, it does seem a bit. It does seem a bit confusing. I have to say, Councillor Cornwall, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I noticed a comment here about <clears throat> encroaching linear development. Um, but am I not right in saying that there is development opposite the site anyway? So, how is it further encroaching when there's already some properties there? Slightly confused about that one. Can I have a comment, please? Okay, sir. So, uh, Cornwall, is that that's obviously can officers answer that one because it is obviously a question to officers, please? Uh, through you, Chairman. Yeah, I think the point being made is that yes, you might have development on one side of the road, 
but that doesn't mean to say that you have to have development on the other. So we're not in that position whereby everything has to progress down the highway equally on both sides, because on one side of the road, you might have no development and it's open and natural in character, et cetera. On the other side, it might have a different character and appearance. That's perfectly normal. Now, I still fail to see where it's encroaching when yeah. it is actually opposite other properties. That's all right. Sorry, I'm confused. Right, any more questions for officers? Yeah, council meetings, thank you. So if there's a legal requirement for this test to be done, um, what are the consequences if this committee passed this this afternoon? What are the consequences of passing something that's illegal? Um, well, um, I would strongly advise against doing something that's knowingly unlawful, for one, uh, and two, um, the decision could be subject to legal challenge by a third party. Okay, so council, I'm going to I'm going to council meetings. Does that satisfy your? Or would you like to come back? Then I'll take council marks. Please let council. Okay, answer. yep, council marks. Sorry, I am now really confused. So why has that not been brought to the applicant? before we even arrive here, because surely we are wasting everybody's time. If we, if we, if you're saying we, we can't actually go for it because we could stand a legal challenge or whatever. And have we, have we brought it to the applicant's attention so that they, you know, I, th I think we're sitting here almost wasting time. I, I don't understand why. So do we just go for a deferment? Not that I want to go for a deferment, so, you know, but this is, this is, we've got a car park across we've the road that's had that we've actually built as FDC that has gone through without, without this, okay. then we're saying to these people, it's got to happen. And we're, we're then being told, also, the gentleman there was being legal, was nodding, yeah, we could, be, we could be challenged and all the rest of it. Surely this is ridiculous. It should be, a, this should come to us clean. Not, this, is, this is a real muddy area now. Yeah, I'm chairman, just going to bring Nick in, thank you. Through chairman, I must protest. At the end of the day, we have made a decision as a committee on a not entirely dissimilar scheme. There's no point in us as officers making the applicants jump through hoops to provide additional information when there's been a previous refusal at this committee on a very similar scheme. That would not be appropriate. We have presented the application in an appropriate way to committee. Yep. Councillor Miss Scanlon, please. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, on that trait, you it refused a previous planning committee. Was the applicants made aware of this legal requirement, which the lawyers have quite said they're professionals? Yeah. Were they made of this this legal requirement to bring this forward next time? If they weren't, then someone was being negligent in sort of just giving them a prompt and saying you had to bring this forward with a legal requirement document it, on the lines of what Count the Marks has said. Because if they're not being told that this is a legal requirement, we're, as Councillor Marks has said, we're sitting here wasting our time. Okay, Nick, please. Yep, through you, Chairman. Uh, the, the agents is obviously a very experienced and knowledgeable agent. They have access to all of the um, information that comes back in terms of consultee comments on application. So the agent will have been aware of the representation. And my colleague tells me that on the previous application, um, there was um, a request made for the information and, uh, and it was indicated to us that um, they didn't wish to provide that additional information. Um, I don't think we can allow that, Mr. Humphreys. We're in offices. Right. We, no, we can't. We, we can't. Unfortunately, we can't. So that's our protocol. I, I really do sympathise, but we can't. We can't let that happen. Thanks. Um, so, Councillor Miss Cannon, you're finished, are you? Anybody else? Oh, Councillor French, thank you. Can this application not be deferred until the agent has the opportunity to get this? Um, Information required. 
Yeah, we're still in questions to officers, but in, in debate, obviously, you but can bring us to you. Yeah. That was a question. Yeah. Tom 83, do you, Chairman, deferments to get the additional information is, is a possible uh, yeah, route we'll the that. committee could take? I think that I I seems, seems to me, that just seems to me that's uh, where we might be going, I think, on this one. So any more questions to officers? Councillor Sutton, thank you. Um, I've sit and listened to all the stuff coming across. Um, this committee refused this application last time for the same reasons that has been been suggested refused this time. So, are the committee now changing their mind and saying that all those reasons that they voted for last time are no longer relevant? Because if they're not saying that. It's pointless sending the, the agent and the applicant away to do this uh, ecology study, or whatever it's called. It, it's only a few months ago since it was refused on good sound grounds. I voted against it, and, and I'm going to struggle to do anything else today. Um, it is way out of the village. It doesn't have Paris Council support. I'm, I'm a bit confused of what, just where we're going with it, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, uh, Councillor Marks first and Councillor French. Thank you. I think we've got two issues here, Councillor Sutton. I think first and foremost, we've got almost a legal type thing that if we vote for or against it, or will we vote for it if we were to do so, um, then obviously mm. we could leave ourselves wide open as a council. And number two, is there any point in going any further over this at this point in time? Because it makes, to me, it makes more sense to defer it because obviously there isn't the right information on the table. Um, but if you want to go that step, and I'm happy to speak up as the local parish council, or district councillor, and also I'm on the parish as well, um, and put a case forward I'm, either way, I'm happy to do that. But I just think it's pointless because we're just wasting time, so we can't really make a decision unless we go with officer's recommendation full stop. Well, okay. To be fair, we're still in off questions to officers. So, is there any more left? Councillor French, sorry. Lily Thank Mitchell. you. Yeah, uh, Councillor Sutton did say it was only a few months ago. Uh, I've got it here in writing. It was 23rd of September 2021. So, that's more than a few months ago. And certainly, um, when this application came in front of us before, we were not uh, given the information of uh, giving up 240 acres, planting trees. Now, you can't really, uh, you know, very seldom do we hear somebody prepared to do this. And these are executive houses. Uh, I will not support a refusal. I will support a deferment for further information. Okay, well, right. So, any, still in questions to office, has anybody got them before we go into debate? I think, we've, I think we've probably done enough of this now. Thank you. Okay, questions of officers is finished. We're open for debate. So, who'd like to open this debate? Councillor Cornwall, please. Thank you. Yeah, Chairman, it was September 21, I it see, was. when when the previous uh, application was refused. Um, and there was a subsequent application that was then withdrawn, uh, I see. Um, I don't actually remember the September 21 um, one, to be perfectly honest with you, so I really can't comment upon that. Um, it seems to me that, that you know, we're going around in circles, we've got to take a decision on the face of it, I suppose, because there is not the information available. Whether or not that was us for, that's really not for me to say, because I don't know when um, the applicant was aware that they had to do it and all, and, and all the rest of it. Um, I suppose the, the, the easy way may well be to determine the application today. And if it's a refusal, then the applicant can either appeal uh, or, in fact, come back again. Um, so that may be one course of action. Um, to say that, that, that if we do take a decision today uh, and it's an approval, then, in effect, we are, are, are taking uh, um, what may well be an illegal decision, uh, puts us in a position where, you know, we cannot be challenged. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, we will be challenged or could be challenged. So, therefore, we don't really have an option 
uh, other than to determine it by refusing anyway. So, you know, I throw those two things in, let the debate commence. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Cornwall. Councillor French? Yeah, I'll just repeat what I said before. I would much prefer to see a, de um, a deferment on this um, yep. to clarify the information that is legally required. Okay, anyone? Oh, Councillor Marks, thank you. I second to count Councillor French. Okay, well, we've got a little way to go before we get a proposal, but uh, anybody else want to add to the debate? Councillor Benny, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, yeah, as we have a history lesson on the previous one, um, we'll give a previous one on this one. I, I remember this coming before this committee, and it was one vote that refused it, only one vote. And you find with every planning committee, as members change, a lot of it, any planning decision is subjective. And it depends who you've got sitting around this table as to whether that view is considered either way. Um, and today we've got the committee we've got before us, and that committee, or this committee we're here today, has got that we'll, we'll make a decision of some sort, because we have to. Um, I supported this application last time. I think it's a good application. We need executive homes. This is right near the railway station. And to me, I see nothing wrong with this. It's within the sign of Maney. Um, I would be more than happy to support this application. But I do see where we are in a position with legality. Mm. I question who would actually challenge us. Having the opportunity to be challenged is one thing. Yeah. Actually being challenged is another. Um, but I would not support a refusal on this application. If there is a deferment, if that doesn't, then that may lead us to the point if, if a deferment is not agreed or if a refusal is not supported and a deferment is not supported, then that only leaves us the option to pass it. We'd have another option put on the table. Um, I supported this very much last time and I, I really think this is a, a worthwhile development and, and I would be pleased to see this, these houses built. So um, I am disappointed that we have got what Councillor Scanlon does call an incomplete application because we haven't got all the information, but I would not want to see this refused today. Yep, thank you, Councillor Benny. Um, anybody else who's still in debate, I remind everybody, thank you. No? Oh, Councillor Marks, thank you. Just in time, thanks. Okay, so I will speak in support of this application for various reasons. I've read the reasoning why there is refusal. To be fair, I can see literally across the car park, which was put on flood zone three from my bedroom window, where this is actually going to be built. Is it going to cause a lot of problems? Is it going to be out of character? I live on an estate that was built 18 years ago, and I'm sure much was said the same then, as we're now saying now, it was out of character at the time. It's five houses on the edge of a village near a station, Yes, the likelihood is it is going to be, they are executive homes, so they are more than likely going to be used by people commuting one way or another from London, Birmingham, wherever. <coughs> We've got the car park there, which has already changed that environment anyway. The photograph we saw previously was not of the car park. It was just of a green field with some test sites. In all honesty, it's the right place to build in Maney at the present time. We're not taking vehicles through Maney. Most vehicles that will be used will be there will turn right and go up Wimbledon Road as opposed to the village of Maney, which is one problem we are getting at the present time, especially at school time. The other problem we've had, we've heard about sort of flood zone three, but the other problem we do have is with Anglian water and the sewage. We're getting all these new houses further in the village and our sewage works two Christmases ago couldn't cope for about seven months. We had between five and 10 tankers a day taking effluent out of the village, and that went day and night. By putting these five houses there and agreeing to these five houses, they're not going on mainline sewage, they're going on cesspit like on our estate as well. So we're actually trying to help the village. I know the parish council has made representation that they are against it, but actually, this is probably the best of a bad job of development in Maney at the present time. And we need the houses. We also have had one shop close recently in Maney because lack of footfall. 
and we've got a second one and also another business that are literally on the edge of closing as well. So if we haven't got any other properties in the near future being built in the area. So this to me makes perfect sense. And if, if it's going to affect anybody, a bit like the car park, it's actually going to affect me, me and my family, but I don't see it being an issue. Thank you, Councillor Marks. Councillor French, then Councillor Cornwall. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to pick up on what Councillor Marks said about the estate he lives on, and it was built about 18 years ago. It was built at that time, and it was all work, workplace homes. And that was the most stupidest policy that was ever put in. Years and years and years of arguing, fighting, planning applications, refusals, and appeals to remove the workplace home. Um, this is not a workplace home. These are executive homes, and we are short of executive homes. Councillor Cornwall, thank you. Thanks, Chairman. Yeah, I mean, I've listened to the people either side of me. And also, I'm an ex-money lad, so I do understand these things. Um, I think on balance, um, if we have not been challenged in the past over the car park, uh, and if we are challenged, it will be a corporate challenge anyway, so that individually we're not liable. Uh, and I think on balance, I will personally um, uh, support the application. And it has nothing whatsoever to do with 240 acres of, of seedy grass and flowers and all the rest of it. You know, if that's the way the farm wants to operate, so be it. I personally actually think agricultural land should produce food, but there we are. Um, that's another issue. Um, so on those, uh, sorry, on that basis, I would support the application, I think, if it came to the vote. It will come to a vote eventually, Councillor Cornwall, that is for certain. Uh, anybody else want to add to the debate? Oh, Councillor Marks, thank you. Sorry, I did forget to say two things. One, obviously, the it is a field at the present time. I've lived there 18 years. I've never seen swans or any other type of habitat on there. There was an issue originally when the car park was built and our previous mayor got a bit upset and hot under the collar regarding badgers, but there are no badgers in the local area as well. So that on that one, unless Councillor, Councillor Sutton pulls a, with around the car park, there is no badgers on the, that side of the railway line, unless you're going to tell me differently, Councillor, you've seen one. Yeah, but not not in that vicinity. Not not in that vicinity. Well, okay, within within the footfall of where that would be. Well, okay, and and so from and okay, all right. Right, we're still in debate. Councillor Meekins, thank you. Yeah, um, I've heard what people have said over that side of the table. I, I do feel uneasy if we were to pass this. This afternoon, knowing full well that it's unlawful, and I, I, I don't think I could actually support it this afternoon. If it went back and this test was was done, then I'd be more than happy to support it. But this afternoon, I couldn't support it um, if if we're going to be unlawful about it. That's a valid point of view. Councillor Marks, again, please. Yes, thank you. We have the legal gentleman sitting there. Can we not get advice on this? Is it unlawful if we pass it? Well, I think he's already given you the advice, but just to reiterate. Uh, thank you, Chair, through you. Yeah, the, the, the legal requirements are fairly unambiguous on this because, because the site is near what's called a European site, which is a special protection area. The rules are that council should not grant planning permission unless satisfied there'll be no adverse impact on that site. And as things stand today, we don't know that because Natural England, who are the experts who advise the council, have said in terms, we need more information on this. So if you go ahead and approve it today, then you will, I'm afraid, be making an unlawful decision. Now, the fact that nobody might challenge that is not a reason to do it. And I would never advise the council as a whole to make an unlawful decision. So that, that's the reason why it is unlawful. Yeah. So, Councillor French again, please. Yep. Uh, thanks for the clarification on that. I vaguely remember the, the planning application in 2021, but I certainly do not remember this um, conversation. We never had this conversation about it. And I just wonder why 
um, when this new rule and regulation came in, because it certainly was not discussed in 2021. To my mind, you're absolutely right. But what, is, what is, I'm asking the question, so, what has changed? What law, what policy has changed since 2021? We, we, can, we can ask officers of that once the debate's finished, then you can ask the officers that very question. Through you, Chairman, at that time, we didn't get a response from Natural England, and therefore that's why that issue wasn't included in the reasons for refusal on that application at that time but we now have a response from natural england and just because we didn't have that information previously doesn't mean to say that we should uh, overlook it now particularly given the legislative context that's been outlined by my legal colleague to you mr chairman can i ask um when did this information come in was it um in um, when the last application was withdrawn, and I understand it was withdrawn um, uh, because somebody was ill. Uh, I don't know the whole story. So was that information there? Because um, I don't remember seeing it in there either. So when, when did this um, information come back? Um, the case officer advises me that we did have the natural England response in relation to the withdrawn application, but not the one that was refused, is my understanding. Okay, just to, just to clarify, we are in debate, and then if anybody's got any burning desires to say anything else, and they haven't, so you have, so it's up to you now, Nick, as okay. an officer. Thank you. Um, listening to the debate, the debate of, you know, it seems to be going a particular direction in, in favour um, of the proposal. And just to remind members that you should be looking at previous reasons for refusal and identifying in what way this current version of the scheme addresses those previous reasons for refusal. So that's really important. Um, on the issue of the, the station car park opposite the site, that was granted planning consent at the time of the previous uh, applications uh, and the you, you still considered that the site uh, was in an inappropriate location for this development proposal so that's a key thing also there's been mention of um, a Fenland district council application of parsons drive uh, i refer you to the update report um, which addresses that issue and i'd also highlight that um, it's not comparable in two ways. One, that FD site, FDC application was um, physically inside the settlement. And secondly, it was the redevelopment of an existing um, car park. Um, so materially different. Uh, as well as the, um, sorry, I'll start again this last bit. If committee is still minded to look at the scheme positively, then I would recommend that you do defer the application um, to get the additional, uh, what I'll call globally uh, ecology information. But secondly, you'll see from the report about the concerns from the highways officer, those concerns were insufficient to warrant refusal of the scheme, but perhaps do need uh, a little bit more work by the applicant so that a more comprehensive uh, proposal can be put to you. Obviously, as I indicated uh, at the start of the discussion on this application, is that you know, we wouldn't want to have the applicant do that additional work, given that the principle of the development was uh, not acceptable. Uh, but if the committee is minded to um, consider the scheme is now acceptable, um, then I think it would be appropriate to get that extra level of detail in respect of the, the highway works. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Cornwall, is that a, have you got a question for officers? Yes, Chairman. Thank you. Please. Uh, okay, the officer has just said that we should um, we should uh, ourselves determine how this application differs from the previous one that was refused. But we haven't got anything in the report that says why the previous application was refused. So how can we compare the two? You, I mean, I, I don't even remember 
the the other one that was uh, maybe there was in the report. Perhaps, Nick, been can, on holiday. Yeah, perhaps Nick can clarify that before we get up, bring in Councillor Marks. We need to belt and brace this. In 20 seconds to speed read that. There's some glasses I've got, and Councillor French would definitely lend you hers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, please do hurry up time. Sorry, Councillor Mark, it's absolutely correct. So, sorry, Nick, can we just go back to what you're saying regarding? the highways and the highways officer making regarding the traffic along there and the speed. Would that have not been the same with the application for Fenland for the car park, which is only 200 metres, if that, away from that? Would we have not had the same issue then? Um, I, I couldn't hand on heart say, because I've not rehearsed <laughs> that car park application for the purposes of this meeting. Um, but I think it's all to do with um, you know, the design of, of the access, the footway, and the TRO that would be required for moving the speed sign. I think that was everything, was it? Right, I'm going to while well, cancel. Oh, and warning also. signs for the um, level crossing. Um, Yet yeah, while Councillor Cornwall's deliberating still, Councillor French, then Councillor Davis. Thank you. I, I did ask the agent and the applicant at, at, uh, when they did their speech, would they be prepared to look at reducing the speed? Well, surely to goodness, if they're prepared to do that, then these old signs would be looked at at the same time. One would, one would have thought so. I, as you're well aware, um, Councillor Connor, uh, as a county councillor, you know what you, the hoops you have to go through through the highway and transport stuff. So you know if they're doing one thing, they can do another. Correct, correct. I agree with you. So I'm going to bring in Councillor Cornwall because he's he's finished deliberating, and then Councillor Davis. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I have speed read it, and it's interesting that uh, to paragraph five of that block. Um, right. Where a project is likely to have significant effect on habitat site, unless an appropriate assessment has concluded that it will not adversely affect the integrity of the habitation of the habitat's site. Due to the location of the feature surrounding and within the site, there is potential for protected species to be affected by the proposed development, uh, and so on and so on and so on. Insufficient assessment has been undertaken and inadequate information submitted. So actually then, in the previous application, we determined there that insufficient evidence had been provided. So surely the applicant would have known that when they were submitting this and would have therefore complied with one of those reasons that for refusal. Would you like to come back on that, Nick, before I bring Councillor Davis in? Um, I will hopefully get kicked by my colleague if I haven't got this quite right. Um, I think that might be a little bit unkind on the applicant because I think and at the time of that refuge scheme, we haven't had um, the Natural England uh, objection. And the reason for refusal was simply around ecology physically on the application site. Did you want to come back at all? I'm slightly confused even more now. This is getting worse and blooming worse. I wonder if perhaps we should defer this well, and, and let the applicant and the officers actually get it completely sorted out before it comes back. Okay. I really honestly think we are at a confusing that, that, That's absolutely fine, Councillor Davis, but 
um, you've just touched on the point that I've been waiting to ask the question of officers. We've got to be extremely careful in, in if we defer this, that on our reasons for the determinant, for, for, for the, um, yeah, the review. because if you, if we only include in the deferment the actual missing report, then that means we accept all the other, uh, and there are other reasons for refusal here. So I think we have, it, we are, personally, I think we need to go for a refusal because we can't, we can't sort out all of this. It would be far easier if the application just came back again. There's actually a question to officers, of mm. course. Um, yes, both you and Councillor Sutton are, are, are correct, is that um, it goes hand in hand that it, if you're going to defer the item purely for the, um, the issue of the, the birds, um, you've got to be satisfied that all the other reasons for refusal that were previously agreed by committee um, have been overcome in, in some way. Um, and if I may, Chairman, uh, with regard to sort of Councillor French's um, sort of comment about um, traffic regulation order sides of things, I think I, I would be inclined to agree with you if it was something that was really straightforward. But I think that this is perhaps a little bit more complicated because um, of the, uh, the the railway. So just to quickly go through the uh, highways officer comments um, indicates that the, pedest the proposed pedestrian crossing needs to be separate from the vehicular access involving um, a full height curved footway and it will require localised length footway on the east side of the road to be provided. The footway should be two metres wide where possible and reduce only to 1.8 if dictated to by physical constraints. Uh, the road currently drains uh, over the edge into the verge. Once a footway is introduced, this means uh, drainage will no longer be possible and a positive drainage system is required. Whilst this is no engineering detail, which can be addressed post planning, if the development is approved, an acceptable solution may impact on the scheme viability and should therefore be considered now by the applicant. Um, the proposed vehicular access clashes with the existing terminal speed signs and level crossing warning signs, both of which require relocation um, and th that requires a, a, a TRO. Uh, and, and certainly there's no certainty that that TRO will be granted. Um, do, 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 do. Yep, that, those are the, the, the headline issues there. So I think what Harway's office says, there's quite a bit more engineering required when you're providing the footway because of the way the roads drained and the um, might wish to spend some time considering what the solution might be, not necessarily a complete engineering detail, um, so that, that you know, it can be demonstrated that it is actually viable for the applicant to deliver. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor French. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, um, Nick. I do sit on the highway transport at County Council, and it is, as you're well aware, it's controlled by the Rainbow Alliance. At the last meeting, they agreed, which was only a couple of weeks ago, agreed to bring in 2020. And for anybody that doesn't know what it, want, it is, um, they want to bring in a speed limit of 20 miles an hour everywhere except major roads. Now, surely that is a, a Class B road. Um, I can't see it ever happening because of the, the cost of it. But if the applicant is prepared to look at speed reduction himself, put in a, a TRO, Transport Regulation Order, um, it doesn't cost a fortune. And I'm sure the applicant and the agent can discuss with the highway officers at County Council. So I don't see that as another, another excuse um, put up for refusal. Did you want to come back on that, Nick? Because we are still in questions for officers. No, thank you. No, thank you. No questions for officers at all. I think we've probably done this one today, really, um, as far as questions. Right. So, no, is. Well, yeah, question is no questions more for officers, no? No? Okay. So we'll, we'll open the debate then. Who'd like to kick this debate off, please? Thank you. 
So basically then I'm, I do apologize. So as following protocol, as mentioned previously, I will be look, initially looking for a proposal to go with officer's recommendation to refuse this planning permission. Have I got a proposer to do that? Go against officer recommendation. So with officer recommendation to refuse this, it's Councillor Sutton who's got that. And Councillor Cornwall's likely to second it. Sorry? Well, we're moving forward at least, aren't we? So we've got a proposal, a proposal to go to officer recommendation to refuse this application, proposed by Councillor Sutton, seconded by Councillor Cornwall. Can we have a show of hands on that proposal? So those against? We haven't got any abstentions on that, so that's it. So that proposal fails. So I'm looking for another proposal, please. Councillor French. Yeah, I propose that um, this application is deferred um, for further information to um, clear up all the, the bits and pieces that seem to be messing it up. Okay, that's fine. So Councillor French is proposing you defer this application, which is absolutely fine. You'll second it, Councillor Marks. So deferment. Sorry, Nick. Thank you. So we've got proposing a seconder. Can we be clear on what we are deferring this for? Absolutely. This is what's going to come into with disrespect bits and pieces. We need to define what we yeah. define at deferring this floor. If we are deferring it to get the um, ecology report, for want a better word, and to sort the footpath out, then I am happy with that. Uh, but the other reasons, the LP3, LP12, A, A, C, D, um, no, I, I, no, I, 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 I supported this application before. Um, yeah. And, and I would like to see this passed today, but I see where we're in a legal position where we can't be. But I want to be certain what I'm voting on. So it is just deferment to sort out the ecology report and to sort out the engineering for the footpath and the signs to make that very clear. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I uh, voted to approve this last time, as you absolutely know. So I, so that is what we're going to go with deferment on. Is that that's, that's good for you, Nick? Is it before we go through, through you, Chairman? Uh, Councillor Benny beat me to it. So uh, thank you very much. Um, the <laughs> right so please mind so we'll do a swap yeah. Yeah. Um, so go on yeah in, a, in addition chairman uh, and as i mentioned previously um the proposer needs to go through each of the reasons for refusal and identify um how those are now satisfied by the proposal okay so we've already got a proposer for, for Councillor French, seconded by Councillor Marks, to defer this application. All those in favour of that? But we've got to, you've got to, before you do, you've got to have reasons why you're going to defer it. Councillor Benny? Chair, I think what you're looking for is the reasons of what is listed in the report that is different from last time and why we. Right. Are, not going with those this time would that be correct that's correct absolutely correct right could i could i help you can help please do right. that's, that's right that's right i hope my learning friend here <laughs> yes, uh, carry on I mean, please when when this came before i supported this and my view hasn't changed on this application from when it was before us before i don't consider that this is building outside the settlement footprint i think this is within Maine. um we'll book out no please Thank um you. That the the site is adjacent to an existing footprint. Absolutely, is we've got a railway station there. That's the, the the place to be developing. Would not have an adverse impact on the character or appearance of the surrounding countryside and farmland. We've just built a great, great big car park. FDC has built a great big car park there, which hopefully soon will be open if we can get the trees down and the cameras working. Um, so I, I don't see that that is a problem. Uh, the proposal is of a scale and location that is in keeping with the core shape, form, and the settlement. This is the right end of Mainly to develop because we don't want to see more traffic going into Mainly through the other end. It's going to put too much pressure on the road system and sewer system. So, yes, although this is on uh, not on Main Sewer, 
but this this means you can come in off off the uh, 141 and you don't go through the town of mainly so this is where the development for mainly needs to be um oh we got e uh we did not extend the linear uh, features of the settlement it does but that's where the development's going to come and that if mainly is going to grow which mainly needs to grow because it, it, the shops as councillor marks has said are struggling um, and businesses are but we, we want to see these communities survive and thrive and if we don't have more people there they will that will not work so again with that one um i, I fully supported this last time let me go through the other bits and pieces i get everything right 16 d um makes a positive contribution to the local distinctiveness well things evolve and mainly evolves, mainly isn't what it was. My house is built on what was farm farmyard years ago. So all these things evolve and change. And everything you build changes the, 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 the landscape and the layout. And it's very subjective. And I think that um, something like this, it's subjective. I supported it last time. And, and I think it's the right thing for mainly. And I think it's the right application and it will be in the right place. Anything more? Mitigation and flooding. Yeah, I've already asked uh, Mr. Humphreys. Um, we can build the land up. There are technical ways to resolve this so that the, the properties don't flood. Um, Mr. Humphreys has given us uh, um, his assurances that this will be done. And if they can't be reached in accordance with the planning department, then they won't be built anyway. So um, there are mitigation. We passed one at the other end of Mainy. On the way down to Pearls Bridge, that land was built up six foot to stop the flooding down there. And when you drive down there now and you look at that house that's built, that house looks very good and it doesn't look like it's built up. If the same can be done here, I've said this before, we can build in flood zone three right next to the Neem waterfront in Fenland, but we can't build in mainly Benicle Turbs. And I think this, with the mitigation measures, that safeguards the property and that's what we should be doing. And also, could we add probably the traffic regulation order as well that uh, Mr. Humphreys is also going to uh, liaise with the county council? Yes. So we need to put that in as well. Yeah. I think that's a good, good um, start. So, any, any so anything else, uh, Count Nick? Please. At, at, at the risk of sounding picky, the, the, the reasons why it's acceptable in flood risk terms given um, are not relevant to the passing of the sequential test. Because obviously um, you can always build a, a property above the flood level, uh, and that's um, not the sequential test at all. Um, that's the um, exceptions test, which you can only move on to if the development passes the sequential test. So just because you make it safe above the floodplain doesn't mean you pass the sequential test. Getting more and more confused now. Oh, I think we're chasing something that we could chase all day. Uh, I think we are. Um, I think, um, yeah. You know, we resolve one thing and then we're faced with another. Um, and I, I really feel it's this committee's discretion. We we can do that. And okay. I, I tend to think I'm happy with all those. I think we've covered enough points on this application uh, to, uh, to to do this. And considering where this was the first time this came before planning committee. As to the extra hoops that we're having to jump through now, I think we're more than satisfied where this committee wants this one to go. We will find out in a minute when we have a vote on it. Okay, so I'm happy. I'm happy with those. So, all, so what we're doing is biodiversity and, and, and really deep on that, and so more from uh, natural England, aren't we? That's what we. That's what we're looking for. So, so anyway, so I'm happy with that. I think Let, let's just let's go to the vote now. Yeah. Sorry, Council. And indeed. I'm a little bit concerned about this um, sequential test, but the, the local plan does say that a sequential test should be taken where needed. So are you suggesting that it's not needed then, Councillor Bendy? The sequential test. Yeah. I'd say yes, yeah, I'm saying on this particular application, yes. Yeah. It's my personal view. 
Well, let's move on. So anyway, I think as, as Councillor Ben said, we'll be chasing the tails, and at four o'clock we'll still be we'll still be on the application. So we've got a proposal to defer this application on um, uh, just on that. So it's Councillor French has done it. Councillor Mark seconded it. So for a deferral, can we have a can we have a show of hands on the deferral, please? Those against that application has been deferred. Thank you very much. Lively debate. Thank you. We don't need they don't need the signature test. Nobody does. They don't, not on this application. No, we we're asking for trouble because it would be quoted over and over and over again. So what we're going to do now, we've, we've been going an hour and 20. No, we've been going, yes, we've been going an hour and 25 minutes. We're just going to have a short break for 10 minutes, if that's okay with everybody. Thanks.
Thank you, members, for your prompt return. I'll now hand over to Nikki Carter. She's the senior development officer here to present agenda item number six, F stroke YR 22053F for Freddie. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Personally, I draw members' attention to an update report which has been circulated. Agenda item six is a full application for a two-storey, four-bed dwelling with detached garage. An outline application for up to two dwellings was refused by the Planning Committee in July 2022 due to the failure to comply with the sequential test in relation to flood risk and the visually separated nature of the site. These issues still remain. The application site is indicated in red on the location plan aerial photo. It, the site is part of a large area of open scrubland and is approximately 40 metres to the west of the nearest dwelling, clearly separated from the existing estate development. It fronts Gall Road and is served by an existing footpath and cycleway. The proposed site layout can be seen on this slide. Access to the site is from the southeastern corner leading to a parking and turning area, beyond which is a garage. The dwelling is set towards the front of the site. The proposed elevations are shown here, detail in the mono-pitched and flat roof design. The proposed floor plans are detailed on this slide. This slide details the proposed street scene which clearly shows the separation and contrasting design of the proposal in relation to the existing dwellings. The top photo shows the application site, with the lower photo showing views to the west out of the settlement and east towards the existing estate development. The principle of development is considered to be acceptable and there are no issues to redress in relation to residential amenity and access subject to conditions. However, the site is located in flood zone three, the highest risk of flooding, and is considered to fail the sequential test. The development has a poor visual relationship due to its separation from the built edge of March and appears randomly placed, exacerbated by its design and appearance contrasting with the prevailing nature of development on Gall Road. As such, the recommendation is to refuse the application consistent with the previous decision on this site. Thank you once again, Nikki. We have one speaker on this application. I'd now like to invite Peter Humphreys to make his presentation to committee at five minutes, uh, Mr. Humphreys. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a resubmission um, and it enables us to overcome, hopefully, or clarify reasons for the previous refusal namely flood risk. Um, as on the uh, previous application, I explained uh, uh, and compare this site again to Fenland Council's own planning application at Parson Drove, very similar, where the application they had was in flood zone three with sites that were available, but they discounted them. This is in flood zone three and sites that are available, but not similar enough. I'm sure everyone wants our applications to be determined in a similar manner to Fenland Council's. We are offering renewable energy solutions as Fenland Council did in order, in order to make this application more acceptable. The policy LP16D states that local plan requires that development make a positive contribution to the local distinctiveness and character of the area. We believe that the application in front of you will enhance Gore Road as you go down uh, from the bypass. This application will add interest and uh, help raise the profile of March. The site is on uh, the site of a former dwelling, and we have included historic plans to show that there was a dwelling there because at the last, at last um, time it came to committee, members couldn't remember or didn't realize necessarily there was a dwelling there which has now been demolished.
And uh, it's unfortunate that this plot is the only area which is undeveloped on the Gore Road area as developed by Canon Kirk and adds numerous new houses and certainly looks the part. What we would hate to see is that this site is um, fenced in with Harris fencing and left until someone else tries to uh, get a new house in the area. So it's a, a case of edge of town, uh, certainly in a sustainable location that is not argued and uh, supported by the officers. Uh, and we believe that the flood zone three uh, application is similar to uh, one that Fenland Council have had approved in Parson Drove. I would therefore uh, request that members support this uh, simple one plot application. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Humphreys. Members, questions, clarifications to Mr. Humphreys, please. No, no burning desire to do so. Thank you very much. Members, questions to officers. Councillor Cornwall, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I can actually remember a house there, but that's just on a point. Um, there is a comment in 1.2 that the, uh, um, the site appears randomly placed. Um, but surely it's going to be surrounded by continuation of the current um, approved development in Gore Road, is it not? It's finished. So yeah. there is no more development Nick, down there. Either for Nick or Nick. Is that, is that then, uh, all right, okay, that, that does away with the next question, which, about, which was going to be, um, right, does, does, the, does the approval there uh, to build in, the, in um, flood zone three di di differ from this particular site? So, okay. So there is no more development in Gore Road that's planned. Not on that site. There has been a recently approved application on the opposite side of the road within flood. Sorry, I can't hear. Apologies. There's been a recently approved last week um, application on the opposite side of the road, the southern side of Gull Road for 55 dwellings within flood zone one. So actually the site isn't necessarily isolated as such. An... It isn't asserted that this site is isolated, just that it is separated from the existing, the edge of the built form on that, the estate development on the northern side. Members, still questions to officers? Yeah, Councillor Meekins, please do. It might be semantics, but what's the difference between isolated and separated? <laughs> Good question. Nikki. I'm not aware that there's a specific definition within planning for that, um, but obviously isolated would generally be described as a, a dwelling in within the open countryside that, that is separated from any kind of built form. In this particular case, there's a 40 metre separation, so it isn't isolated from the settlement, but it is out on its own in terms of character. Does that, does that help you at all? No, not at all. No, oh, well. Okay. Okay, right. So still questions for officers. Councillor Purser, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just something just actually just occurred to me as I was actually reading such things like this. Um, we were told earlier on that um, a similar project had actually been done in Parson Drove with much similar sort of circumstances. But are we not always told that um, we take each application at its own merits? It doesn't matter. It's attaching a different town, different village, to mine a different site. And I think it's completely different. Is that, am I thinking the correct way? You do we take every planning application on its own merits? But you, Chairman, the, the, the case cited by uh, Mr. Humphreys is very much materially different. Um, the, the site in question. Um, is already developed land. It's a garage parking court um, and was being re redeveloped. So it's obviously within the settlement of uh, Parson Drove. So it's very different to what's before us today. Questions to officers at all again? No, no burning desire. I'm going to close that then. So I'm asking members, 
to debate the application, please. Who would like to kick that off? Councillor French, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit confused as well. I mean, I wasn't over there because I haven't checked my emails um, the last couple of days with regard. To, I do know they were sent out. Um, but I'm quite surprised that um, 55 dwellings were approved last week under delegated powers. And we're talking about one single house. Uh, Canningcar, I believe, are now finished their bit. It's taken them 20 years to build 135 houses. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing the other side of the road, that'll take another four, <coughs> 10 years to do 55. Uh, this is not a separation of March. Yes, there is, there is a small gap. I do know the site well. There is a small gap, but I really uh, can't understand, and especially as the agent said, that we're going to put all this high tech stuff in heat pumps and triple glazing and everything else um, to you know satisfy environmental uh, and modern building. I just um, get confused. Yep, right. Councillor French has kindly kicked off the debate. Anybody else want to continue it, please? Councillor Cornwall, thank you. Yeah, Chairman, I mean, further, further down uh, Gore Road towards the bypass, there are um, one or two properties down there uh, on, the, on the, the other side of the road, which presumably would also be construed to be isolated and yeah. all the rest true, of it. But true. I mean, they're there. And they've been there for a very long time. So I, I can't actually see where this particular site on its own is that isolated, to be quite frank with you, especially as on the opposite side of the road, it appears that officers have approved 55 gunnings. So I'm slightly confused here again. Confusing times, Councillor Cornwall. Anybody else want to add to the debate? at all before i bring officers in no i can't see anybody else right thank you debate's finished then nick or nikki would you like to uh, close anything out uh, just to remind members that if if you're minded to approve it you have to consider the uh, previous reasons for refusal and why the current scheme um overcomes those okay. as well as the um the recommendation that's before you. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, so I'll be initially looking for a proposer to go with officer recommendation to refuse this planning application. So have I got a proposer to go with officer recommendation for that first? Doesn't seem we've got anybody at all for that one at all. So obviously that's failed. So I'm looking for another proposer. Proposal, please. Councillor Cornwall. Okay. So have we got a, a, a seconder? Councillor French. Okay, so, so to sum up, it's we've got it. Yeah. So, Chairman, we've, we've got multiple reasons for, for refusal that, that need to be addressed um, in the uh, proposal to go against officer recommendation. I will give Councillor Cornwall and Councillor French adequate time to come up with those proposals while you're going to go against, while you're going against officer recommendation. But I think there's Nick is looking because there's numerous reasons for refusal, yes. and you've got to, uh, Chairman, you've got the flood risk, uh, flood risk. reason for refusal. Can we put in? Presumably, uh, the same gate meadows uh, are trying to apply there and to be part as by this Uh, Please. On, the, uh, on the grounds of consistency, um, Chairman. On the of consistency, yeah, I, I accept that. that. 
Three, three yes, years, Chairman. I, I, I can't speak chapter and verse on an application that I'm, I'm not familiar with, but I'm happy to, to investigate and report subsequently. Um, but, you know, we've got national and local plan policy, says the sequential test has to be undertaken, uh, uh, and therefore uh, I'm duly obliged to, to, to comment that um, ignoring the need to do the sequential test wouldn't comply with um, the requirements of national and local plan policy. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor French is busy reading the book. Um, have you got anything else to add to that? Chap, it is, isn't it? With anything else? Oh, I think the uh, the last application. I think uh, we discussed at length. So I, I think we should be um, being cons con um, consistent with um, what we've said. I think the the flooding issue can be over overcome. Um, as Councillor Cornwall said, you know we're only talking about one house here. I don't think it's in isolation. Yes, there is a gap there, uh, and the gap will continue there because Callum Kirk on the uh, the rest of the site, which backs onto um, the Gold Road, and part of the park is going up to um, being handed over to Fenland Council, and the other part, my understanding, is going to be turned into a nature reserve type thing. So I don't see that this one dwelling will actually harm anything at all. Anything to add to that, Councillor Cornwall? No, I mean, we are interpreting an officer's comment, I think, and disagreeing with them at the end of the day. I think that, that it, it's as simple as that. Okay, it's fine. So, we've, after all this, so we've got a proposal to go against officer recommendation to approve the application. It's proposed by Councillor Cornwall, seconded by Councillor French. Can we have a show of hands on that proposal, please? Any against? I don't think there is. Oh, Councillor Sutton, sorry, Councillor Sutton, but that application has been approved. Thank you. So without further ado, I'll now hand over to Nikki Carter to present applicate agenda item number seven, FYR, FYR 22 stroke one double three eight. It's a variable of conditions, variable. On a good variation of conditions, yeah. yes. Thank you, so Nick. Thank you, Chair. Agenda item seven seeks amendments to the plans approved under application F forward slash YR20 forward slash 0641. Sorry, Jim, was... would you like would you, would you like to start again? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, that's fine. Thank uh, you. Agenda item seven seeks amendments to the plans approved and uh, uh, application F forward slash wire 20 forward slash 0641, an application for nine dwellings approved by planning committee in June last year. Amendments are proposed to plots one and two and the rear garden boundary locations to so plots one to three. It should be noted that only the impacts of these amendments can be considered, not the wider scheme, as this already has planning permission. The application site is indicated in red on the location plan and aerial photo. It comprises of paddock type land at the junction of Eastwood End and the A141. The previously approved site plan can be seen on the left hand side and the proposed site plan on the right. Amendments detailed here show the siting of plot two being moved approximately 0.5 metres further north and east and alterations to the rear boundary locations of plots one to three. Also indicated is plot one becoming house type E, which will be referred to on the next slide. This slide shows the revised plans for plot one in comparison with the approved details. Amendments are an increase in height by 23 centimetres and the addition of windows to the storage space in the roof and chimney structure. 
Revised plans for Block 2 as shown here. Windows and doors to the snug are amended. Members will be aware of this site from the previous application. However, photographs of the junction of Eastwood End and the A141 and wider site are shown here. The proposed amendments are considered to be minor material amendments in the context of the overall scheme and as such are acceptable. It is therefore recommended to grant the application with the imposition of conditions as per the original permission. Thank you once again, Nikki. Um, we have one speaker on this application. I'd like to invite Gareth Edwards, of course, he's the agent, to make his presentation to the committee. You have five minutes. Sorry. Sorry, I've just noticed who the applicant is. Um, I'm going to step out of this one. Yeah, absolutely fine. Please could you note uh, Councillor Marks's. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak to you in support of this variation of condition application, uh, Eastwood End, Wimbledon. We'll say it is Flood Zone 1. Uh, we have worked closely with your officer to secure their support for the revisions in this application, which have largely been instigated by a potential purchaser for one of the houses. The archaeological investigation is underway, as you will have seen if you've gone out on to say, and subject to uh, clearing the remaining conditions, the applicant is looking to make a start on the site uh, with which the approval was granted by this committee, and we thank you for that. As the officer's report highlights, the revisions to the scheme are minimal, uh, so I would ask you to support your officer's recommendation and approve the application. Thank you. Councillor Meekins, thank you. Yeah, um, the parish council, oh, I can't find the date, um, 16th of March objected on the basis, why have you got a chimney when you're not going to have any anything to go up the chimney? As it, it says, uh, why have a chimney unless solid fuel is to be used? It seems unnecessary. Can you just... Just an architectural feature, really. Just a feature. Yeah. Thank you. Well, as well, which let's not lose sight of that. <laughs> right. Um, any more questions at all, Mr. Edwards? No. Thank you very much. Members, questions to officers regarding this application? Councillor French, yeah. thank you. Um, yeah, it was a question to officers. I mean, yeah, the so. email we have had from um, uh, one of the residents saying that these are not minor amendments. Can we just have a clarification? Are they minor or are they not minor? We consider that they're minor in the context of a, a development of this scale for nine dwellings. Okay, any more questions to officers? No, thank you very much. Um, so I'd like to now invite members to debate the item in respect to the material planning considerations relevant to the application. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. So we're in debate, guys. Who wants to kick it off? Councillor Benny, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just see this. This is a minor. Um, amendment to a plan and it has officer recommendation to approve or to grant. Um, I see no reasons, no planning reasons, why to turn this down. Um, I think officers have got this one right. So uh, I think that unless members have got a lot of burning desire to talk about it for an hour, I think we should crack on and uh, have a vote on this one. One would hope not, Councillor Benny, but still, we're still in debate. Anybody like to add to it? No? Okay. I'm going to close the debate now. Um, right, officers, have you got anything to sum up? No, thank you. No, thank you. Right. So, so I should initially be looking for a proposal.
proposal to go with the officer recommendation to grant planning permission. So on that basis, Councillor Miss Scanlon. Have we got a seconder for that? Councillor French. So can I have a vote on that proposal, please, to go with officer's recommendation? Councillor Marks, are you? He's oh, sorry, he's abstaining, of course. I think, well, that's unanimous then. Um, the application has been approved then. Thank you. So now we'll just... We've got to go to eight now, haven't we? Um, just hang on a second. Right, so uh, we'll now press on. Nikki, can we can we have agenda item number nine, FYR twenty two one four one five F, please, Nikki? Thank you. Sorry, we've gone. We've no, absolutely. We, it was, it was, we're okay. Got a couple of minutes for that. And no worries at all. Thank you. you. Firstly, may I draw members' attention to an update report which has been circulated. Agenda item nine is a full application for a two-storey, two-bed dwelling in association with the existing Air Sports Activity Centre with office and associated facilities and siting of a mobile home during construction. The application site is indicated in red on the location plan and aerial photo. It comprises of a grass field access from and on the western side of Cross Road, outside the built-up settlement of March. There are existing on stretches on site, including storage buildings and toilets. Proposed site layout can be seen on this plan. The proposed dwelling is located to the south of the existing structures, with two parking spaces to the front. The existing access is to be utilised. The proposed elevations can be seen here. With the proposed floor plans detailed on this slide. The photos show the existing access, structures and surroundings. The submission largely fails to address the requirements of policy LP12 Part D in relation to the functional need for a dwelling on the site as it is not considered that the issue of security is sufficient to overcome the policy requirement to direct development away from elsewhere locations such as this. Given this failure, the scheme also fails in terms of its sequential acceptability in relation to flood risk. Furthermore, the proposal is considered to detrimentally impact the character of the area. As such, it is recommended to refuse the application. Uh, thank you, Nikki, again. We have two speakers on this application. I'd now like to invite Mr. Davis, he's the applicant, and Mr. Craig Brand, he's the agent. So if you'd like to make your presentation, thank you. You have. Oh, 
I think I think as I think we'll we'll do it all at once, and then members members can question whoever they wish to, if anybody thinks, can't they? So just yeah, start whenever you're ready. Thanks. Probably like me, you was unaware of the airfield and the air sports the centre offers, as it has never been advertised locally due to its unprotected rural location. The business has been successfully operated from the site since 2013. Last year, at the end of their 10 year lease, the applicants completed the purchase of the field from the landowner. The centre currently relies on electricity from solar panels as a substation is required to provide a permanent supply at a cost of £44,000 to my clients. Fire got at their home in 2021, and with the council aware of their situation, they moved into the current mobile home found on site. Since living there, they have realised the benefits to their business, which also allows passers-by to call in and inquire about the centre's activities. The committee report states that the business could be operated with security cameras. Without a permanent electricity supply, there is no guarantee they would be, they would be operational during the night, especially in winter. Reported recently in the Fenland Citizen was a break-in at a builder's yard in Whipsey Road, where security cameras and houses opposite provo provided no deterrent. The applicants believe that only their full-time presence will provide a sufficient deterrent to protect their continued investment and allow them to advertise locally the recreational activities. The report also states a district-wide sequential test is required. It is unreasonable to expect an existing business to comply with this. The Environment Agency's flood risk map shows roughly 90% of Fenland in flood zone three, the towns and villages situated in the higher flood zones. The business requires an open countryside location for the wind and air sports offered, which your officers appreciated in granting the original 2012 permission. The closest dwellings in Crossroad and Boroughmore Road are also in flood zone three and related to agricultural farms. None of them are for sale or suitable to provide the needed security. My clients want to make the Fenland community aware of the unique activities the centre offers. They, however, need to be confident that their investment and the recent council grant to assist, the set, to assist their expansion is protected from theft. Living on site, they believe, will provide that protection allow an efficient operation and be present for business seven days a week. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr Chairman and members. Fenland Wind and Air Sports Centre is a unique outdoor recreation centre in East Anglia, which has been operating now probably for 10 years, over 10 years. Since living on site, we've picked up regular additional business that we would have previously missed in the past when we were only present for pre-booked activities at the centre. We recently received a substantial £55,000 council grant to purchase an additional 10 blow carts, complete with sidecars designed for young children and disabled activities. These are all being delivered later this month. Due to the value of our specialist equipment, long-term delays in getting replacements should a break-in occur, we would like to permanently live on site to prevent this possibility from happening and making running the business more efficient and secure. Should we be granted planning permission today, as Craig mentioned, this will allow us to proceed and invest in the permanent electricity supply for the centre as part of the house build, which includes business reception, office, disabled toilets and customer welfare facilities. It, is also, it will also enable us to invest in electric rechargeable segways and, or go-karts as a replacement activity when there is insufficient wind on pre-booked blow-karting days to run the session. Being able to offer an alternative activity on the day to the blow carts will dramatically reduce our refund and cancellation rates, making the business more profitable and sustainable. We'll also be looking at employing additional local staff to help instruct and supervise customers using the centre's activities. Before COVID, we were taking part party bookings via Groupon and Virgin Experience Days are waiting to come on board with us as soon as our increased fleet of blow carts are up and running. Sorry. 
30 seconds, Carol. Uh, to date, we have not felt safe advertising our local activities generating business only from out of area using websites specifically related to activities available at the Fenland Wind and Airsport Centre. Knowing that we can protect our business by living on site will allow us to expand and attract more new local business uh, locally, offering our services to local Fenland community by advertising the centre in various town discovery booklets distributed monthly throughout the Fenland area along with other local forms of media. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. The members, any questions to Mr. Davis or Mr. Brand? Sorry? Um, yeah, okay. Councillor Davis, that's it. Fine. No, this question is then for Councillor French. Sorry. Sorry, question for Mr. Davis. Sorry. Have you had any attempted break? Yes, we have, yeah. How many? Uh, one. Just one. But yeah. there's a lot of break-ins being down cross mode in the last 10 years. And did you report that to the police yes, and is it documented? Thank you. French. Yeah, thank you. I have three questions. First off, how long has the mobile home been on site and been lived in? Um, 18 months since our house burnt down. So didn't you think to apply permission for the mobile home? We actually consulted um, Mr Harding via an agent and they gave us temporary permission to be on site. Really? Yeah. don't remember anything coming to Marchstown Council. Um, it is, does see in the address given for the located approximately that you live 1.6 miles away. So are you living in there or have you got another house 1.6 miles away? My um, my home address is at Almond Drive, 1.6 miles away. Okay. But until that's finished, we're still living on site. In the I know we are number two or three. I know we are. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the next one you mentioned about go-kart. Go um, have you got planning permission for go-karts? Are you aware how noisy they are? And um, it would totally... They're, like... they're electric. That's why we want the electric on site so we can ah. recharge everything. So it's all environmentally friendly. Ah, okay, thank you. Okay. Councillor Cornwall, thank you. Well, you're saying, Mr Davey, that you want to live on site, A, for security reasons, but also so that you can use it properly as an operating centre yep. with an office and so on. You were saying that you know, with business Developing trying to further. pick up and so on. Um, because that's probably why the economic development team support the application, then if, if that is so. So it's a little bit more than just a residency. We also have, we've just tied an agreement up where we've got 75 mile exclusivity of the app. Sorry. We've also tied up a, a recent exclusivity deal where we've got exclusivity for our activities for 75 mile radius of March. Um, yeah, I mean, um, right, I understand the security bit. I've got friends that live nearby and they have cameras and dogs yeah. uh, because of the problems in that particular area, area. So I do understand what what you're saying is, but you've actually, you have proof that you've actually had one attempt to break in anyway. Yep. In fact, did they break in? They broke well, into my barn and they opened all the doors up, but it got disturbed for some reason and we didn't have anything stolen, but they actually broke into the building and it was documented. We had police down there. You say that the the grant that you've got to increase your fleet there um, was actually council uh, grant anyway. Yes, yeah, a growth works grant. Yeah. Councillor Marks, thank you. Sorry, uh, Mr. Davis, you mentioned you've got exclusivity for seventy-five miles for what? For our blow cuts. Your blow cuts. Okay. It's an activity centre, so no other activity can set up, can take business within or set up within that area. So, hence, we attract a lot of business from all over the country as well. But we do want to attract local business, which is why we want security. Yeah, French. Yeah, you, you just uh, answered Council of Marks, but 75 miles you've got exclusive. Um, does that include um, the old noisy go karts, or is it just for the electric ones? No, oh, sorry. Is it? No, no, no. The, no the, the sailing boat, the same yeah. blow carts. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, not okay. the go -carts. I was going to say the go <laughs> I don't know how that works because Donington got one. No. So it's okay. more. The idea of the electric is for so we can get segways in or um, electric go carts because we're wind related. If for any reason we've got a, a big book of 100 people or something in the day, and for whatever reason, which we do get, the wind drops off to an unsufficient level. We've got an alternative we can offer them. 
so we don't lose the revenue and we can we don't have to do cancellation. I, I do remember when you put permission in ten years ago for for this. Yeah, we were here. Right, so I'm going to take council meetings, councillor Penny a uh, person, and then Benny in that order. So council meetings, please. Um, what is the sort of core business that you do then? Because there seems to be a lot of emphasis on these go karts. So what's what's the actual core business? Okay, so the out outdoor activity centre, we, we are a powered paragliding centre, one of the largest in the UK, which is paragliding with a motor on your back. Um, we do the blow carting, which is our, a mini land yacht, which is three wheels with a sail. Um, and we do kite buggy and we do anything wind and air related, really. So that's what we do. We're so so not, a, not actually aircraft as such? No, we don't do anything GA which is general aviation, um, your big stuff. We don't do anything micro lights. All we do is powered power gliding, which are very short takeoff and landing areas. Um, they're relatively quiet as well. And we do a full training school for that facility. We do training for the land yachts and we run activity, um, outdoor ex exclusive events like for Groupon and um, Virgin Experience Days and stuff like that. You'd go and buy an experience to come and visit us for two hours or whatever. So we are the biggest in the country. So why haven't you advertised it? Then? Because of security, because we haven't been able to live on site. Um, I hadn't, it's only last year we purchased the land, late last year. And I didn't want to invest in electric and things like this um, if we can have the security of like tying it all up. So now we've purchased land, we want to reinvest in, second, we want to reinvest into the business. Um, obviously living on site gives us full security and we have very, very expensive equipment you know, and we need to protect that now. So. Against the purser. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if I understand it correctly, you were saying earlier that you uh, that a lot of your um, business is actually passing trade. People are going past, seeing you, going, what have you. Now, I used to live, sorry? No, I didn't Hang say on. that. Wait, wait, was... wait, wait for the question. Wait for the question. I used to live down like so many, many years ago, and until we looked at this, I'd never even heard of Crossroads. So how can you pass and trade? No, it's, what I said, Mark, is we, we are picking up pass and trade that we didn't pick up previously with not being on site. Um, I don't know why, but there is a lot of people on bikes. There's a lot of people who do dog walking and everything down Crossroad. And if there's any problems on the bypass now, People use Crossroad to come in from Gore Road, Boroughmore Road, down Boroughmore, cross, uh, Crossroad, and then down Knight's End to Benwick or cut back up to the crematorium. So it is quite a busy road to have blue on And the crematoriums, they use it that way as well. Okay. I'll do Councillor Benny, then Councillor French. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Um, just sat here thinking about this. Um, I am aware because of my portfolio hope, portfolio hub for economic growth. Um, I am aware of a grant that has been um, given to the applicant. Um, I have not visited the site. I've not had any dealings at all with this, but I just wanted for transparency just to make it clear that mm -hmm. Anne, who's part of the economic growth team, I am aware that Anne has been talking to this gentleman and um, I was aware of the grant. But other than that, I've had no more dealings. In fact, Anne recommended that I didn't have any. At one point, she said that she'd get me down there as a uh, as, as a visit to the state as one of my economic growth um, things. But we we po postponed that to keep me sterile, so that if this came to planning committee, which it now has done, um, but I've had nothing in terms of dealings. But I am aware of the grant that was given. Yeah. I've spoken to our solicitor and I know he's happy and, and, and he's happy. I'm happy. We said we're a happy crowd, aren't we? So you are very well. So, Councillor French. Thank you. Um, the last time I was down Crossroads was a long time ago and the road was full of craters. I'm not talking about potholes, I'm talking about absolute craters. I think I could only do five miles an hour. I did see that highway we're going to do some work. Have they resurfaced it? Uh, they haven't completely resurfaced it. They keep filling in potholes. Mm. Um, but they don't. I mean, the, the road is atrocious. It was the last time I, I, I think you're never going to stop that. And because there's so much agriculture on the Ben Road, 
you always get the middle bit high and the, the two troughs to each side. So, yeah. yeah, it's not the best road in the world, but we don't have problems with access because we tend to drive everybody in from Knights End Road, which has been resurfaced at that end yeah. where the chickens are now. Okay. So it's a lot better road condition. I, I would get your high your um, county council yeah. to push that for you. Mm -hmm. Not me. I'm going to come in here now, I think, and then I'll, 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 yeah, I'll take cancer marks first, sorry, then I'll come in if you like, doesn't matter. Just, Dave, just one very quick question, we're saying about security, mm -hmm. what sort of rough value are we looking at that you're trying to secure? Uh, I don't think, think we really want to go into that block no, with you two, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. So, I think, I think we'll say something here. Um, is Finland open for business or not? It's supposed to be. Supposed to be. <laughs> Thank you for that answer. Look, the economic growth um, applaud it really. They support the application. They've given them a grant, as we've just heard, to enable current growth. Um, whether there's ten thousand pounds worth of equipment down there or hundred thousand pounds equipment, we don't want to go into it because a we don't know. Um, security on site for me. I am always supportive of that, having a, a, a metal yard many years ago. I lived only about 1.6 miles from a commercial road from where I lived at the Walnuts at the time. And I was always too late if there was a burglary to catch the, uh, the culprits. So had I many years ago got planning permission for a bungalow house in commercial road yard, um, I'm sure that I would have taken up that opportunity. Mr. So, Chairman, I'm sorry, this was the questions to the applicant. Yeah, not a statement. That's all right. So <laughs> I, I'm just saying. So I'm looking at my circumstances. So, um, so what's your <laughs> thoughts to my comments? I totally agree. I mean, it's like saying I'm 1.6 miles away. Yeah. Um, winter time is my worst problem at the moment. Because being solar powered, when the sun is at a low axis, I can't keep power down sight, so I can't keep security on. That's it. If I was then broken into, 1.6 miles doesn't sound a lot. When you get out of your house, you get dressed, defrost your car, you drive down icy roads, that could be 20 minutes, and you've lost a lot. So I've worked all my life for this. Okay, that's fine. So you can see perhaps where I was getting to in the end on a comparison route from where I was. Um, so, right. Anybody else want any more questions before we let these guys go? No, thank you very much. Questions to officers and members, thank you. No burning desire to any questions for officers. So now I'd like to... Um, ask it. Thank everybody, and I'd like to now invite members to debate the item in respect to the material considerations relevant to the application. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. So, debate, Councillor Cornwall. Thank you. Yeah, Chairman, I can remember this when. Um, so it must be in excess of ten years yeah. ago when when this came before committee. Um, I think there was a certain amount of reticence, and really, I don't think anybody understood just what. The applicant was actually going to provide. If you if you um, sort of look out and fend some days, you'll see these gentlemen with these things strapped around the backs flying. Basically, um, it has obviously proved very popular. The applicant got it right, thank goodness. He's had considerable support from the council in in more ways than one, and uh, he's got the the current support, as it says in there. Um, I think we are open for business. He can't operate from the middle of a town because they're, they're, they're taking off and flying. He has to be located out in the countryside. And in fact, um, the site that he chose was away from, from most residences. There's the odd one or two down there. And there's businesses down there as well. So he has no choice. He has to operate in a rural setting uh, because of the, the things that are happening down there. Um, it seems to me that that uh, I think I first got tied up with this when I was 
chairman of the tourist board or something like that all those years ago. But, um, you know, the, the business is obviously running uh, successfully. Um, he's had a, a reasonable grant. We won't go into details, of course, because this is a public meeting. Um, um, a support is expanded again. Uh, it's well established. I know that there are security problems in that particular area. Um, I have people down there who, who, who live and work with businesses, and they actually live on site with those businesses, but they still have to have cameras and they still have to have dogs uh, to give them a level of security. It's not particularly easy in that area. Um, and I really honestly don't see any problem with the application, to be quite honest with you. I think it, it you know, now it's a well-established business and the applicant has actually purchased the land, which he couldn't do before. Um, so therefore he was limited in, in quite how the business was established, I understand. But now he owns the land, then he's trying to, um, to make a, a, a formal setup down there and a proper business and operate it in a rural setting, because that's what he has to have in order to operate. So as far as I'm concerned, I actually think that it's an application that should be supported. Yep, thank you very much, Councillor Cornwall. Just to um, remind members, we're still in debate. Councillor Cornwall was the first to speak. Anybody want to carry that on at all? Councillor Benny, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, um, I mean, we've had several of these applications come before us where we have need for we're told there is need for uh, security. Um, we all know that there is crime, and this gentleman might have had one break in, but and it wasn't successful. It wasn't successful from the burglar's point of view. It was very successful from the gentleman's point of view. But in that case, he was lucky. But I know from the ram raid I had at my shop 18 months ago, or no, 15 months ago, it's not the damage, it's not the theft, it's the time it takes to put it right. That took a year to get that fixed. And in a year, the business will go bust. If it hasn't got the equipment it needs to operate, then that business will fall. We've supported this gentleman. We've given him a grant. Um, it, it's a growing business, so I'm led to believe. Um, and, you know, this needs security. We've passed several applications here at the planning committee because of rural security. Um, and, the, you know, it's all very well saying put CCTV, even if you've got electricity, uh, 20,000 pound CCTV system is thwarted by a pound balaclava from Poundland. Because if you can't see who's on there, and all it does is tell you that somebody stole something, it doesn't stop somebody. And the best way to stop crime is to have somebody living on site, because nobody ever knows when you're going to walk out your door. And I think with this, you know, Fenland have, have gone through the, the, the growth works appeal. We've got some money to, to help this business. And if we don't pass this, we're, we're failing this gentleman and we're failing this business. I think it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's a good application. This isn't just a house in the middle of nowhere. This is a house with purpose and it's a business that is, is doing well. And that's a success. And there's plenty of businesses through Fenland at the moment that are really struggling. So I think this is a, a worthwhile application. Extremely wise words, Councillor Benny. Uh, Councillor Miss Scanlon, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I sat in your seat when this originally came before Planning Committee, and there were all kinds of concerns about noise, public chickens, chick chickens, yes, um, being disturbed by the flying um, people. Um, none of this ever materialised. It, it's become quite a solid business. Um, they need, as Councillor Benish says, they need some form of security because to have their premises broken into. I support this application because they've they've looked at it. The one concerning part on it, it's got a um, mobile home on it and there doesn't seem to be any notification of when that mobile home should be removed um, as they've done with other applications once the premises is constructed or is it their intention to keep that they the temporary planning permission on that which they said they've got um how long does that last um so that needs to be looked at in terms of 
the definitive length of time that that stays on the premises should this application be granted. Uh, Nick wants to come in here before. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, a, a couple of points that raised by Councillor Scanlon. In terms of noise complaints, um, we have had multiple noise complaints um, that have been investigated. Um, we've had officers down there. Um, it's not an easy thing to to um, assess. Um, the concern was that there was flying taking place over properties where there shouldn't be flying, but on the occasions where we attended, um, we did not witness that. So uh, it, it's not quite true to say we haven't had any complaints. We have investigated complaints, but uh, they've not been founded on the occasions that we've attended. So that's sort of point one. Point two is, and just to recap, um, during one of those um, enforcement visits to the site, a discussion was had um, with the operator, the gentleman who spoke, um, and it, it, I might not have this 100% correct, but broadly speaking, it tells the story. Um, the, the gentleman, as he said, um, had a fire at his premises, his normal dwelling, and was able to reside there. Um, and, and so the enforcement officer made a call to say, okay, you can reside on site for a temporary period of time whilst your house is made good. Um, obviously, living on site um, is, been perhaps longer than intended by the applicant and ourselves, it's fair to say. And I think we were close to serving an enforcement notice um, if the matter wasn't resolved, but we've had this application in um, that um, meant that it wasn't appropriate to serve the notice. Obviously, in terms of this particular application, the recommendation is for refusal and, and therefore you know, we wouldn't put on any, there aren't any conditions that we would normally put on if um, we were recommending approval. But if committee is minded to approve the proposal, um, then naturally um, a condition would be placed on the consent to say that the, um, the uh, static caravan should be removed on first occupation of, of the dwelling that's been granted planning permission. Uh, and finally, Chairman, if I may, um, it's become apparent that we failed to consult the CAA, the Civil Aviation Authority, uh, and they had objected to a development on the opposite side of the airfield on Cross Road. Um, so if committee is minded to approve the application, I'd ask that that's subject to consultation with the CAA to make sure that they don't have any objection to the dwelling being in the position that it is proposed to be. Thank you, Chairman. Sorry that was long. Uh, no, no problems at all, Nick. Councillor Sutton, the floor's yours. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, I remember this um, this application back in the day. I weren't on a committee when it was first went through, but I think it was when something subsequently came through in 2015. Um, the, you know, the, 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 the owners had to be applauded for... Um, you know their vision of of you know which many of us was perhaps a little bit skeptical of at the time um and and many of us probably thought that you know it, it would be there five minutes and it'd be gone but that's proved to be you know not the case so lots of members have brought lots of different things um which in my view are, are basically irrelevant i think of relevancy is is there a functional need and I think it'd be quite safe to say that, that no, there isn't a functional need um, because the place has been going for 10 years without. So it would be difficult to, excuse me, it would be difficult to prove functional need. So then we move on. Is it a desirable, is it desirable to have a, a, an office and, uh, you know, dwelling next to this unique business? And on, on that score, I would say it, it is desirable, obviously desirable to the to the owner, but I think it's it's something that's that's desirable for the success and the continuing success of the business. 
So we look at the reasons for refusal. Um, if we decide as a, as a committee that we think it, it, it is right to be there and it is desirable, not necessarily needed, but desirable, then the reason for refusal for the sequential test then falls away because if we agree that it should be there, then obviously it can't go anywhere else. That's that's a simple fact. So I think on this occasion that, that I probably would be going against office recommendation, um, but fully appreciate why they've made the recommendation because many comments have been made about are we open for business? There is nothing in the local plan that says anything about being open for business. Officers work to this document. Um, and I have no problem with, with their recommendation or the reasons for it. Um, but on this occasion, I slightly disagree with them, and uh, but I respect their decision. So I think on balance, Mr Chairman, I will be voting in favour of the application. Okay, members, just to remind you that we're still in discussion. Uh, so, yeah. Councillor Cornwall. Yeah, Chairman, officers have just mentioned um, the seed problem that um, would, with the business that would require referral or at least discussion with the Civil Aviation Authority and so on. Chairman, we're not discussing the business. The application is nice. a property, a residential property to operate the business from. It is not part of the business itself. There is no argument that the business is there and it is operating. It's up to the Civil Aviation Authority to put any controls on the operation, it is not a planning thing. That's the first, yeah, and, and that actually, whilst it can be reported to the Civil Aviation Authority, it's actually the responsibility of the Civil Aviation Authority to take action where necessary. Correct. However, when you look at the introduction on the recommendations, and this is why um, I have a problem with it, it says steer right LP3 steer new development. Well, new in relation to the business doesn't exist, so it's new in relation to the house that we're talking about, or the property that we're talking about. Uh, to sustainable areas offer the best access to services and facilities, unless it can be demonstrated that such development is essential for the effective operation, and I assume that means safety as well, uh, of, and it lists them, and one of those things is outdoor recreation and transport. So as far as I can see, the application actually does comply with LP3. There isn't a problem with LP3, it actually complies with it quite clearly. Now, am I right or, or, or wrong? Can officers just comment on that please? Uh, through you, through Chairman, um, I have to disagree with Councillor Cornwell on the issue of the CAA. Uh, the CAA doesn't have any powers to remove development that's been granted planning permission and built. Therefore, um, the, the normal process is that a planning application is made in appropriate circumstances. The local planning authority consults the CAA, and if the CAA objects, to that development because it poses a risk to um, pirates, then the council should not be granting planning permission. And that's exactly what happened in respect to the development directly opposite um, this development. Turning now to uh, LP3, um, I actually defer to Councillor Sutton who could not have put it better really, so hats off to you, Councillor Sutton. Um, the starting point is, do you consider that there is a justification for this dwelling on the grounds that it's essential that it is there for security purposes, yes or no? And if the answer in your minds is, yes, it is, then as Councillor Sutton has said in relation to flood risk, the property can't go anywhere else other than on this site. So that would indicate that um, you know, you're, you're, you're in a situation that you can't get out of. Clearly, in terms of LP3, that is a policy that is trying to concentrate development within um, settlement areas primarily. But when you're talking about agricultural 
uh, dwellings and other dwellings associated with rural businesses that can't be anywhere else, then our spatial policy makes provision for that. So if your starting point is it is needed for the purposes of this rural based business, then LP3, as you've said, it, it, it is not a, an issue per se. Okay, still in debate, guys. Would you like to add anything to that, Councillor Cornwall, as you were the last speaker? It, sorry, you, you, the local authority should not be allowing development in a location which poses a risk to aircraft. I'll, I'll use the term aircraft users. I know it's not. It's not there. The dwelling is not already there, Chairman. The, the, the dwelling is an, a new, a new structure. Okay, right. So we're still in debate. Obviously, uh, Nick can answer any questions when his time arises. Any more debate before I close this debate? I think we've gone far as we can with it. Right, so I'm closing the debate. So Nick, would you like to add anything on to it? Um, only to say that if members are minded to approve, um, I'd ask for delegated authority to apply appropriate conditions, which uh, would include linking the um, occupation of the dwelling to the operation of the business. Obviously, um, making sure that the floor height of the property is above the flood level um, and I'd also hope that um, the issue of planning permission is subject to no objection from the Civil Aviation Authority. Okay. Thank you Chairman. Right, so I've been initially looking for a proposer to go with officer recommendation to refuse planning permission. Have I got anybody who wishes to propose that? Looking in my beady eyes says no. So I'm looking for a, another proposal, please. Councillor Sutton. Yes, on this occasion, Chairman, I will uh, propose that we go against officer recommendation. Yeah, yeah reasons, Councillor Sutton, please. Yeah, the reasons, as, as outlined during my little speech, um, you know, okay. we, we feel that uh, although that, that has not a proven need, we think it is desirable for the good running of the business. So um, LP3 sort of falls away. Um, the flood risk obviously falls away because if we agree, then that's where we'll be. Okay. Is, is that with the conditions? That's with the conditions obviously recommended by. Okay. So we've got we've got a proposition to go against officer recommendation to approve this application. It's proposed by Councillor Sutton, seconded by Councillor Miss Scanlon. Can we put a? Can I add something else, uh, Chairman, um, about putting in a factor for the removal of the mobile home on the first occupancy of the uh, built premises? Yeah, that's absolutely great. Yeah, I think we can add that in, can't we, Nick? I think that's a really sensible thing to do. So can we have a show of hands on that, please? That application has been approved. Thank you. Right, so we'll nip on again. So um, I hand over to Daniel, uh, Daniel Brook, to present application FYR 22-1243. It's a, a PIP application. Um, Daniel, when you're Daniel, when you're ready, please. Thank you.
They're doing fine. They're okay. Okay, thank you, members. Right, agenda item 11 is um, a permission in principle application for up to three dwellings on land north of numbers 8 to 10 Ascom Row in Doddington, access from Hospital Road. The item is before members today owing to the number of representations received contrary to officer recommendation. Excuse me, Chairman. Um, the planning agenda has got five dwellings. Yes, that three. was item 10. That was item 10 and it has been withdrawn. It's been withdrawn. Yeah. I thought I thought I'd lost the plot again there, Councillor Miss Scanlon, but it, look, it looks as though. <laughs> okay, sorry. Sorry. No, I'll continue. So the application site is shown in red on the location plan and aerial photo on the slide. The site is in an area of approximately 0.65 hectares of agricultural land set behind numbers 8 and 10 Ascombe Row. The site is accessed via Hospital Road, which is a single track road with no footways running north from Bennett Road. The application is for permission in principle to develop the site for up to three residential dwellings. This stage of the permission in principle application requires consideration of location, use and amount of development proposed only. The proposal includes the erection of three detached dwellings with associated parking and landscaping, along with the provision of a shared private drive with one point of access off Hospital Road, as can be seen. Photographs, photographs show the current use of the site as agricultural land. The top left image shows the dwellings along Ascombe Road to the southern boundary of the site. The top right image is Hospital Road viewed towards Bennett Road. And the bottom images show the current vegetation, vegetation boundary to the eastern side of the site. Only location, use and amount of development may be considered at this stage of the permission and principal application. With regard to location, the proposal fails to recognise the intrinsic character and beauty of the countryside, the pattern and character of the natural landscape and built development at this location, and would appear incongruous both with the rural character of the immediate area, creating an adverse visual impact to occupiers of adjacent land and users of the public footpath network in the area. The development would necessitate removal of some of the continuous hedgerow to the east of the site, which would then add to the urbanising effect of the proposal. If the principle of development in this location were acceptable, the development for only up to three dwellings would not make efficient use of the land. Therefore, recommendation is to refuse the application. Yeah, thank you, Danielle. We have three speakers on this application. First, I'd like to invite Ian Hickey. He's an objector to the, uh, to the application to make his presentation to the committee. When you're nicely seated, Mr. Hickey, you've got five minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for hearing my objections to this proposal. Um, as an introduction, Ian Hickey, live at Nine Ascombe Row, one of the two properties directly impacted from the proposed building application. As a background, moved, moved from London in September 2018. The prim, primary reason for purchase of, of the property, of our property, was um, space, country living, village life, privacy, security, future retirement, and a forever home. Um, discussions with the original owner, um, Charles Boughton, prior to the purchase, he assured us that uh, the, the the intention, his intentions of building further property, uh, uh, further buildings on that land, was uh, was was not in his intention, and it was to be kept as farmland. We asked if the land was for sale, if any of the land was for sale behind the properties, behind our properties, but he was unwilling to sell individual plots at that time. Subsequently, we have uh, we were relieved when three of our neighbours purchased part of the land to prevent any possibility of future buildings. In his objections, Mr. Bowden mentioned that, he, as he stated, that he would never have sold the land to the, the applicant had he known his intentions for this land. We also, my wife and I, are also very disappointed with the, uh, with the proposer, as the previous statement of his intentions was to purchase the land to prevent any building 
work going ahead. As far as privacy and regulations are concerned, the proposed dwellings will create an unacceptable encroachment upon our personal privacy, which will have a direct line of sight into our living room. As stated on my formal objection, the application clearly goes against local planning policy and adds to the breach of the village's housing threshold, which at 192 committed as at the 8th of March 2022, has already, is already 150% of the 127 threshold agreed. The District Council recently refused planning permission to one of the other neighbours that purchased the land from Mr. Bolton at the same time as the applicant. For the, the application at that stage was for a change of use to a garden. In the findings, it was stated that the application breached Fenland Local Planning Policy LP12, being delivering and protecting high quality environments in Fenland. It therefore doesn't make sense that now approval should be given to building three, do, uh, three domestic dwellings on and associated gardens on the same site. Setting a precedent, recently there have been two new dwellings approved and built on Hospital Road. Along with this application, there are further, there's further planning applications submitted for a further five houses along the same road. The field in which the three dwellings would reside has space for a, probably approximately 50 dwellings. Approval of this application would set a precedent. That would support an enormous spike in the applications of this field, especially as the person that has purchased the remaining land of the field has already submitting planning applications for those seven dwellings. I do have faith in the other two neighbors who have also purchased land at the same time as the applicant. But again, the approval of this application would enable them also to apply the planning commission under the same criteria. Hospital Road is a narrow single lane road with no formal passing places, with a lack of pedestrian pavements. It is a key part of Donington circular route used by many walkers in the area. It provides emergency exit for the hospital and the care home opposite, opposite the site of the, of the discussion. Of the discussion. Further development will have a severe impact on the character of the road, necessitating destruction of many hedgerows and trees, therefore urbanizing a countryside road and walking route. As confirmed by the Cambridge Highways Authority, Hospital Road is a narrow road devoid of, of opportunity for safe passing, generally ill-suited for further development due to increased risk of vehicle and pedestrian conflict. It does say, however, that the additional three houses would not in itself have material impact on Hospital Road, but that it does provide a precedent which could result in a severe cumulative impact. Lastly, the summary findings of the recent survey conducted by Donington Neighbourhood Plan Group concluded 71% of respondents were, seconds. Sorry? All right. were concerned about traffic, too many houses, public transport and infrastructure. On these grounds, I urge you to reject the application. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr Hickey. Question members, questions to Mr Hickey, please. Councillor Meekins, thank you. Yeah, um, on the um, report, um, 5.3, it says local residents slash interested parties, and it states there's nine letters of support been received um, but there's nothing to show any letters of objection to this. It, is that? No, that, that's, 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 um, that's not true. Yeah, they're, 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 if you look through. Oh, sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. if you look through, if you look through the report, Council meetings, you'll find there is objectors. I, I will say that there were. Um, I, I will say that. Do beg your pardon. It's OK. I will say that. Um, a lot of the uh, supporters to this were canvassed. If you if you look at the the style of the uh, of the um, supporting letters, they were canvassed, um, and it looks like people have gone door to door to actually um, get that support. Yep. Um, anybody else got any questions, clarifications? No. Thank you very much, Mr. Hickey. Thank, thank you. you very much. No worries. Thank you. 
now I'd like to invite John Cuttridge, he's a supporter of the application, to make his presentation to the committee. You've also got five minutes, Mr Cuttridge. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time today. Yes, I'm John Cuttridge, owner of Mega Plants down Hospital Road, Doddington, if any of you don't know me. Um, highways did grant us, Ben District Council did grant us planning permission to extend the garden centre with a shop and cafeteria recently. So highways did support us and say the road was suitable for further traffic. We do have an application in asking to widen the road and pedestrianise the road, which we will be paying for, but that has not been approved as yet. Um, um, just a little about myself. I've lived down Hospital Road for over 45 years since I was a small boy. I attended the village school. I've been to the scout group. I was a scout leader. <clears throat> I've maintained most of the village most of my life with grass cutting, hedge cutting and tree planting. Um, yes, there will be a small piece of hedgerow removed for access to these dwellings. The hedgerow is badly diseased. It's full of Dutch elm disease. Most of the trees do fall during the winter time and we have to go along and remove them. We don't bother the council. The council has recently planted, uh, granted permission for several hundreds of metres to be removed for Aston Row number 10 to move their fence line out. And they, re they recommended that no problem and grant granted it. This is only a small piece of hedgerow and with the granting of this, there's hundreds of metres of new hedging to be planted, planted at the rear to cover some of this. Most of the people, I can say nobody canvassed myself to come here today in support of this application as was suggested. I was in complete support of it when I saw it. Um, the people that have objected are mostly from Ascombe Row and basically they've given reason for their own properties not to exist. The properties they live in, their homes, is the very same piece of agricultural land that this application is for. Excuse me. <clears throat> I have seen that land farmed all my life since a small boy, without doubt. Um, the access to this site is very good. There's clear vision to the end of the road, to the public highway. The street lighting at the end of the road lights this road very well. And no doubt there'll be more lighting at the entrance to the properties if this is approved. Um, this is a flood risk zone one site, so we don't need to have any discussions about that at all. Um, the photos shown by the council gives a very poor indication of Hospital Road. I have obviously lived there. Opposite these dwellings is the extension of Doddington Court, a very large building which Fen District Council did approve. Um, it is a bigger site impact than anything else these dwellings can have. And the opposite side of the field, if you look to the rear, um, the extension on Ascombe House um, home is also quite large and substantial and going a lot further into the countryside than these properties. Um, so the, the views, it's not really impacting on the views. This is only 0.3 miles from the centre of the village, going from the clock tower. I don't consider this to be the outskirts of the village. Doddington spreads out 1.4, 1.5 miles. There's been far, far more development on the northeast and south sides of the village to what we are on the west. We haven't got anywhere near as much development to what there has been down sort of Cedar Avenue and such like. Many properties have been built which are further from the centre of the village and a lot of their access roads on a new estate are actually narrower than our present road to access by. So I just wanted to cover a lot of these points really quickly. Um, I would like to say I'm very proud to live in the Fens. I'm very proud of where I live and there is the need for affordable homes. I do realise this. The council have said that it's not good use of land and there should be more dwellings. But when you go to the Cotswolds, when you go to the Chilterns, when you go to Norfolk, you see beautiful homes and people look at these homes in envy and say, what a beautiful area to live. Well, I can't see why that cannot be the Fens. When people are traveling to us and visiting the garden center, they should be able to look at these homes and say, what a beautiful place to live. I would like to live here. And I can't see why we shouldn't have that in the Fens as well as other areas of the country. Um, it has been suggested that there is no passing places down Hospital Road. Seconds. There is 
passing places down Hospital Road. We had to put those in with our planning that was passed by Fenham District Council. We did those with overseeing them with, with highways. Highways provided the stone. They could not provide the work because there was no availability and they, they basically told us to get on with it, which we did to the best of our ability, which they then there inspected. Um, so there's contradictory matters on some of the letters because they say there's no passing places down Hospital Road and then other ones say there's very limited passing places. If you can just just f finish the last sentence because you've had your time now, Mr Cutridge, thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, that, that was on to do. trying to show how passionate I am for this project. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Members, questions for Mr Cutridge, Councillor French, thank you. Um, Mr. Cartridge, um, I have been to your garden centre, but I don't have to, I don't believe I have to um, declare an interest. Um, my understanding that you did get planning permission to do your cafe, when are you going to build it? And is it that part of the application um, for the upgrade of the road? Um, the groundworks are starting this summer. The building has been yeah. ordered, but it's actually coming from abroad and there's a bit of a delay in waiting for manufacturing. But the application has gone in to widen the road and pedestrianise it, but we are waiting for a response from Fen District Council. That sorry. is sorry, Mr. Cottridge, that's an irrelevant that's a irrelevant question to be asked, and it's not fair for you to answer at this particular time. Gentlemen, if I may as a point of clarification, uh, the, the gentleman's a supporter of the application, he's not the agent, he's not the applicant. Just just in case absolutely that point. So we'll move swiftly on to uh, Councillor Marks. Sorry, on what Nick has just said, and I'm not sure if this should be pointed to itself or not. Roughly how far down the road is the entrance for this new development? Are there any passing places before you get to the entrance? It's, um, it's quite close. There is no passing places between that and the new development because it's within... Oh, I don't know, 20, 30 yards. It's very close. Thank you. Any more relevant? More relevant questions for Mr. Cuttridge, in my view, please. No, thank you, Mr. Cutridge. So with that, so with that, I think we'll um, go on to ask Mr. Hall. He's the agent. He's the guy that you need to put these questions to um, after he's made his presentation. And of course, you've got five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Members will allow me to speak on this application. Members will be aware that Doddington is a growth village and there have been planning approvals in the last two years beyond this site down Hospital Road for residential development approved by this planning committee against officer recommendation on both occasions. This site is all in flood zone one and there are no highways objections. That there's been various concerns about the hedge to the front of this site. We're proposing a single access, approximately five metres width through that hedge. Various biodiversity features that the officer talks about in the report, they can be incorporated into the dwellings if approved. At the top of Hospital Road, similar to what Mr. Cuttridge has just said, approved, there's a section of hedge being removed, which is nothing to do with this applicant whatsoever. It's a different piece of land and another access granted. That was granted in 2022 under delegated powers to remove a section of that hedge. That was approved, no concerns were raised there. We've just heard from the adjacent business owner, Mr. Cuttridge, owner of Mega Plants, who supports this application. The reason at this stage three indicative plots have been shown, these are for large executive style properties with large gardens, which is similar to Aston Row, which is adjacent to this site. As members will be aware, Aston Row, which is adjacent to this site, originally that was an agricultural field. 
and that was all built out. The officer recommendation there was to refuse, and that was overturned by planning committee. Could we have the map on the screen, please, that I submitted? <laughs> We can see there the site we're looking at that we've captured in red. You can see further north of this site, quite a bit further north, there's an area there we've captured in green. The first two properties there, which are frontage development, just like this site, were approved by this planning committee in 2020 against officer recommendation, because it was said in the officer's report they felt that was in the open countryside. Then, still in the area of green, there's two further rectangles. Two further approvals were then granted in 2022 by this planning committee against officer recommendation, which also mentioned that the officer felt this site was in the open countryside again, like this site. And they were all approved. It's brought up by previous speaker about three sections of land at the back of Ascombe Row that were sold off. And obviously one of these, this, this is obviously one of them, but this is the only parcel of those three that has road frontage onto Hospital Road. The other two, my understanding, which are not in the ownership of this applicant, only have access from starting to Benick Road itself. There's been further approvals down Hospital Road, as I've just pointed out, both frontage and backland development, all in flood zone one. There's no highways objections, and all of those applications were, and one of those applications, sorry, was objected to by Doddington Parish Council, similar to this site. All those were approved by the planning committee, and we hope members will go against officers' recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Perhaps Councillor French and Councillor Marks would like to say their questions to the agent. I'm going to say Councillor French first, thank you. John, sorry. Uh, the previous speaker, Mr. Wiki, um, said about overlooking. Um, is it overlooking? So the gardens at Aston Row would probably be 30, 35 meters long. These dwellings are side on to those gardens. So the side of one of the side of the nearest dwelling here must be from the rear windows of Aston Row must be 50 meters, 150 foot roughly. Okay, Councillor Marks, floor's yours. So same question for yourself. Roughly how far is the entrance down that road? And are there any passing places? which I think we've already established there aren't. The end, uh, one of the new entrances has been granted off Hospital Road for number 10 Aspen Road, that was in 2022. I would say we must be about 70, 70 to 90 metres further along. Did we put, did, were there any further passing places before the second, the other development you spoke about? No, from my memory, no. Thank you. No. Yeah, Councillor Cornwall. Thank you. Yeah, uh, um, it may not be a park. Um, sorry, a parking space or a um, pull-in or whatever, but your access proposed, I see, is only about um, what, thirty meters from the rear entrance of the the hospital, which is actually a gated entrance from memory, because it's a fire. Uh, assembly point, I believe, uh, for the hospital. Surely there's a overtaking space there, is there not? Um, when I've been along there, again, to go to the garden centre, there are people who do pull in there, yes, and I have done it myself, yes. But I don't think the highways man would consider that to be your past. Place. Yes, but I pe suppose people use it, yes. That's right, officially for highways, point of view, it's not a part uh, yes, um, of uh, overtaking place, there, but yes. yeah, okay, but it, in practice it is, okay. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Cornwall. Anybody else at all? Questions for Mr. Hall? No? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. 
So questions for officers, please, members. Oh, sorry, Councillor Sutton, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, as it's a PIP application, the access is only indicative. Would I be right in that? It's, it's not committed, is it? Right. Anybody else got any questions for officers? No? Thank you. So, members, we'd I'd like you to debate the application, please. Obviously, material planning considerations take me into it into account, Councillor Cornwall, I know you will. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I think according to past decisions with this council, where uh, developments um, further along Hospital Road have been approved, I can't really see how we can actually say no to this. Um, um, in, in, you know, in actual fact, they're probably more suitable than the previous ones that this committee has in fact approved against officer recommendations, I would say. That's the sun, thank you. I usually make the comment, Chairman, that two wrongs don't make a right. In this case, three wrongs don't make a right. Um, I fully agree with officers. I didn't agree with the previous two applications. I think there was officers had that exactly right. That was overturned. I have to accept that that's the de democratic process, but I I agree again with officer recommendations. Um, I, I just don't think it's the right place, and I agree with Dodging the Parish Council. Also, don't think it's in the right place. Yeah, thank you for that. Anybody, Councillor Marks, thank you. I'm a little confused by 1.4. The principle of development in the location where accepted. The development for only up to three dwellings does not make efficient use of the land. Does that mean we should be looking to put more properties on it? Again, we can only look, Councillor Marks, at what's in front of us today. What happens tomorrow? Who knows? But thank you for that comment, Councillor Davis, please. Yeah. Uh, through, through you, Chairman, what, what the recommendation is, is for refusal of the application. And what 1.4 says is that if um, you consider that the principle of development is fine, we think that there are too few houses on that site and it's inefficient use of land. Mm. And you either agree with us or you disagree with us on that issue. Okay, thanks. Uh, and, and if, if, if I may, on the issue of sort of consistent decision making, just highlight again, um, as stated in the report, and I think as the, the, the objector mentioned, immediately next door to this site to the left, um, as you're looking at Ascom Row, is an application site that was very recently refused planning permission uh, by this committee on the grounds of uh, essentially loss of countryside. And this site, it sits immediately next door to it. Thank you, Chairman. Did you want to come back on that, Councillor Marks? No, Councillor Davis, then, please. Actually, Nick has just preempted um, what I was going to say that, you know, the three plots that, that were purchased from um, the Broughtons, the, the middle one, we actually, you know, we, we said we refused it. So, I mean, it's right next door, the plot's right next door. So, Yeah, still in debate. Oh, Councillor Murphy, thank you. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything today at all, but I've got, I've got to say about this. I think it's the most serious place to be putting three, three places along that road. Because at the end of the day, when we went down there, when we went down and had a look at it, um, some people don't go down and have a look, so, but we did. And we just got in there and we had to move. And then we went along and we had to move again. And that was with us with only two properties being built there now. These are another three properties. There's likely to be another five as we've heard. And then there's likely to be another load after that. And it's totally the wrong road. The road will never ever be widened uh, as, as it should be. And it's totally in the wrong place to put these things. I'm totally against them. Yep. If I may, Black Chairman, no. Highways reasons is one of the reasons for refusal on this application. So just to highlight. Yeah, thank you. 
it's it's not it's not a highways reason, but it's one of our reasons because I, I, you can see what's going to happen in, in the future. Yeah. It'd be rather remiss if uh, Nick didn't bring that flag that up, wouldn't it? And it's still in debate, everybody. Councillor Benny, thank you. Thank you. Um, I disagree with some of the other speakers. I think this has merit. Um, we passed other places further down this road. I mean, we've got the, the, the four that were on the, on the screen a bit earlier. We passed those, and if we're passing them further down the road, why not have these at the top? Um, I mean, if you've got 50 metres between the, between the buildings, 20 metres is an acceptable distance between buildings. Um, in fact, I think that's part of the building regulations, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and taking five metres of hedgerow out to provide three very nice homes, more, more if it comes back with it in a full application, um, I really don't see anything wrong with this. Um, you know, that road has plenty of traffic going down it, and I've been down there quite a few times, and I've never had a problem getting down there. And there is, although it's not a proper parking place, there is, as Councillor Paul highlighted, the uh, back entrance to the to the hospital. So there is a parking space there. I've never had trouble getting down there when I've been down there. And I actually think that this, 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 has, you know, this has good merit to it. I think it'd be three nice homes for somebody. Right, still in debate. Councillor Sutton, please, thank you. There, there, <coughs> there may be a, a, a presumed parking space, a passing place there, but that passing place would nowhere near Come up to the specification if it was if it was a, a, a Camden County Council Highway specification, it wouldn't be big enough. It's no nowhere near big enough to be a passing place. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Cornwall, thank you, Chairman. If you look at the right, we're on about parking spaces and all the rest of it. I would take in the place. If you look at the highways um, report, it very clearly says that. The addition of three more properties along that road will only have a minor impact on the traffic on that road. But further prospective development could result in a severe cumulative impact over time. So in other words, for highway purposes, they're not worried about three, a development of three. And they also go on to say, while it would not be reasonable in relation to the proposed scale of development to condition the road be widened to allow two vehicles to pass, nor install a footway. Now, oh, and, and then it says, I don't think requiring a passing place at a point roughly midway uh, is necessary and proportional. So in other words, what they're really saying is, look, we are where we are, and three more properties down there are not going to make a highway impact. That is sufficient to require any particular work. That's what it's saying there. But if there's anything further going on, then they will be interested, presumably, in looking at it again from what they're saying here. So, sorry? Yeah. So, you know, I don't really think there's a debatable item there because I was the same. No problem. We always love a good debate, Councillor Cornwall. Well, um, we do, don't we? We do, we do. Councillor Benny, you've indicated that you'd like to add to it. Thank you. Oh, I did, and I've lost my space here. My screen's jumped about. And it's look, looking at looking at highways. Um, they've got no objections. Oh. And with no objections, I, I see nothing wrong with this. Um, if that highways had objections, that would be a, a totally, totally different um, kettle of fish. But to this, if there are no objections to the access, I don't see a problem with it. Councillor Murphy, please. That's that's really not a reason as it is at the moment. The reason is you've got to look at it uh, through your own eyes and through the eyes of, of what is going to happen. I know we, we sit here sometimes and say you're not allowed to do that, but you, you've got to start to look at these places. You can't keep putting building places there with no roads, no road pavements, no nothing there. It, uh, going down that road, as I said, was so narrow we had to move twice to be able to get out of it and that was in a matter of we we're only down there about 15 minutes 20 minutes looking at it and it will it will exacerbate 
more if you keep going on and on and on building. And so I know you were saying that the, the three doesn't make any difference, but the three added onto the five, added onto the other 20, other 30, makes the difference right at the end. When are you going to say stop? You've got to say stop sometime, and I think this is the time when it says stop. Okay. Councillor Cornwall. Yeah, well, with respect, I think that is what the county has said. They have said that three is okay, but if there is any more, the cumulative, the cumulative uh, effect on it will be unacceptable. So that's what they're saying. So I think they're saying exactly what uh, what you're saying, and our council Murphy, um, in effect. Now, whether one drives down or whether you park up, I think are two different things as well. But we won't go down that route. Anybody else? Because we're, we're having a good debate on this. Anyone who to want to add to this debate? No, I'm not looking at you, Councillor French. It's that blue jacket that uh, dazzles you. Um, right, sorry. Yeah, it's red as well sometimes. Anyway, any more? anybody else want to add to this debate? No, they don't. Thank you very much. Officers, would you like to make any further comments? Uh, if I may, Chairman, obviously you've got a recommendation for refusal um, in front of you, two reasons. Um, I think the first reason is, is the, the key one, um, so to speak, um, and yeah, you really need to focus on well, why is this parcel of land acceptable for development when the one immediately next door to it wasn't. And I think the, if you're minded to approve this application, you've got to be very careful in making sure that your justification is robust as possible um, you know, in case this particular uh, decision you know, comes under the microscope um, in some shape or form down the line. Thank you, Chairman. Hmm. Okay. So, um, thank you for that, Nick. I'll be initially looking for a, a, for a proposer to go with officer's recommendation to refuse this planning application. So, so right, so that's, um, so we've got um, Councillor Murphy. I don't think Councillor Sutton did, but you can if you like, I don't mind. Um, Angus, okay. So we've got a proposal to go with officer recommendation to refuse this application. Councillor Murphy's proposed it. Councillor Davies has seconded it. Can we all have a show of hands on that proposal? Five, six. Those against that proposal? Five. So that has been refused then. Thank you very much, that application. Right, so we'll now go to agenda item number. Oh, sorry, Councillor Gormal, before we go to. It's all right, Chairman. I know you're a bit slow today. But, um, Very would slow. you excuse me during the, the next one? I have to make some phone calls. I'm sorry. I have to do it. Absolutely. Okay. Feel, feel free. Okay, could, could we please note that, Elaine? Thanks. Yeah, could we just have five minutes? Please? We can. We we, we 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 must. Sorry, yeah, Councillor Cornwall said he's only going to be five minutes. Why don't we have? A just, I'm just going to say. I'm just going to say. Um, we'll have only five minutes because time is moving on. So if you've got five minutes, if you've five minutes, will do it. Thank you.
start now. So um, now hand over to Danielle Brook to present, uh, present FYR 221351F, agenda item number 12. Thank you. When you're ready, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So, agenda item 12 seeks approval for the erection of a two story side extension to the existing dwelling at number 21, the Stitch, Friday Bridge. The application is before members today owing to a number of representations contrary to recommendation. The application site is edged in red on the location plan and aerial photo shown. The site is located on the north side of the Stitch within Friday Bridge. The host dwelling is a large detached two story dwelling with off road parking to the front and enclosed garden to the rear. The site is part of frontage residential development along the stitch, as can be seen on the slide. The application proposes the erection of a two story side extension to the west side of the existing dwelling. To facilitate room for the extension, it is proposed to remove an existing established hedge forming the boundary between the host property and number 19, that is a single story dwelling to the west. To the west. No information pertaining to a replacement boundary treatment has been submitted with this application. The extension will be positioned forward of number 19 and will reduce separation between the dwellings from 5 metres to approximately 1.8 metres with no replace, replacement boundary treatment proposed. The extension is to provide a garage and playroom on the ground floor with extension to create a master suite on the first floor as shown on the floor plans. The development would see a two-storey expanse of blank gable wall on the left-hand side elevation, forward of the adjacent number 19, at a wall-to-wall -wall distance of approximately 1.8 metres, as can be seen on the slide. This slide shows the existing site photographs. The top picture is of the existing dwelling as a whole, with the adjacent number 19 shown to the left-hand side of the image. The image shows the hedge that currently forms the boundary between the dwellings. The bottom left picture is facing northeast and shows the current separation between the two story host dwelling and the adjacent bungalow. The bottom right image shows the proximity of the existing dwelling to the substantial hedge boundary, which is due to be removed. So the application is for a two story extension proposed forward of a neighboring single story dwelling in close proximity. The proposal would result in a dominance of the neighbouring dwelling within the street scene to the detriment of the character and appearance of the area. Notwithstanding, the scale and bulk of the proposal would impede outlook from the adjacent number 19, including closing views to the southeast from a main window of the bungalow with a two story expanse of blank wall to the detriment of res residential amenity to neighbouring occupiers. The dominant impact of the proposal would therefore be contrary to policies LP2 and LP16 of the local plan and thus the application is recommended for refusal. Yep, thank you once again, Danielle. We have one speaker on this item. I'd now like to invite Matthew Hall to make his presentation to the committee. Uh, obviously, five minutes, uh, Mr Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Members will have seen that there are no neighbouring objections to this application or any objections from any of the consultees. The key point with this application is the neighbouring property number 19, which is to the west of this site. When we visited this site, we reviewed a street scene in this area of the stitch. Um, could I have the photo that I submitted on the screen, please? Thank you. So this, this is a photo that I took. So the bungalow on the right hand side is the one immediately adjacent to the site we're looking at. So to the left-hand side of that bungalow, as you can see, there's already a two-story property. It's approximately a meter from the boundary. Two-story, as it's shown on the Ordnance Survey map, set well forward of the adjacent bungalow. And that's similar to what we are proposing. That was constructing approximately 2005. On the opposite side of the stitch, property 68 and 72, which are further to the east, there is a very similar situation to this where there is a bungalow set well back from the street scene and a two story property set well forward, just like we're proposing and just like there is obviously next door. The planning officer's report makes reference to this, to this property being set forward. However, 
there are numerous other properties along this side of the stitch that are set forward, more forward than this dwelling, which can be seen on Google Maps when you go there and also on the Ordnance Survey. There's a varied building line on this side of the stitch. Um, on the actual street scene we've submitted, it does show a 1.8 metre high fence along that boundary. So we have shown a boundary treatment, but we'd be happy to accept a condition there. The proposal still has over a third garden area, parking on site for three cars, materials matching in with the existing property, and there are no doors and windows on this side elevation against the neighbouring building. And this proposal is no higher than the existing property with this application having no objections. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hall. Members, questions to Mr. Hall? Thank you. Mr. Uh, Councillor Marks, thank you. You say there's no windows or anything on property. What about the bungalow side? So on our proposal, there are no windows on our side. Yep. On the bungalow side, there are principal, principal elevations front and rear. There are openings. There are openings on the left. And I do believe there is an opening on the right-hand side of the bungalow, which faces our site. But as you can see on, as you can see on the drawing, their bungalow is set all back from our building. So if that's our extension there, the bungalow side that you're on about is all set back. But there is a window there. I believe there opens on that side, yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, anybody else got any questions? Councillor Murphy, thank you. I'm just uh, interested in, in one thing. Why show that side of the, uh, the bungalow where there's more room because the, the house there is at, 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 is at an angle away from the bungalow where the other side where you expect to put this stuff up the extension up is right up as close as it ever can be to the bungalow and there'll be no, there'll be no vision out that way whatsoever it really could ought have to have been taken the other side could, could we have a photo on the screen again please sorry thank you no worries at all <laughs> Looking at obviously that dwelling there, the other side, that is parallel with the bungalow and with the boundary, and it's parallel obviously with this site. So, what I've tried to do is show that this is what's on the opposite side. We're trying to match in with it. This isn't the only thing in the street that we're proposing. There's something on the opposite side. That's why I've taken that photo there. Just to show that on the other side of this site, there is two story because the officer's photos didn't show anything like that. On in the side of the bungalow, that side there's about 1.2 meters from the side of the bungalow to that fence, and then on our side from the side of the bungalow to the proposed fence, there's fractionally less than a meter, so it's that much closer. On our side, which is shown on the ordnance survey as well. Oh. If, I'm, if I'm answering correctly, yeah. Councillor Davis, if you don't want to go, do you want to go back or no, Councillor Davis? Then. No, I want to follow the same the same point. When we, when we stood there in front looking at it, the the gap between the picture of the house that you've took and the bungalow is bigger than the one on the other side. In fact. I think in the report it says a fence to be built because because the, the hedge has to be taken down in order to accommodate the build. Um, and that hedge, that fence, if it's put in, will be right up against the hedge of the other property. So uh, there is quite, I thought, much more of a um, gap on what you're showing us. Um, we're not, it, members can look at obviously the Ordnance Survey Plan or air drawings. Um, and it's gone from the other side, bungalow to the fence, there's about 1.2 meters. And from the side that we are, once you take the hedge down, put the fence up, from the edge of the bungalow to the fence, there's a bit less than a meter when we've measured. So, our side, as it were, is probably a foot closer. There's not much in it to show that on the ordnance survey. Remember to watch it. 
I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I don't know whether we're I, I don't know whether we're at the wrong. It's, it's the other it's the other side of the bungalow where the where where it is. It's not that side of the bungalow where where the extension is going to be. Yeah. It's the other side of the bungalow. You're looking at you're looking at the bungalow front arm, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Right, well, yeah. Well, well, it's literally on this side, isn't it? On the yeah, it's on the right hand it's on the right hand side of the bungalow. But you're showing the house on the left hand side of the bungalow. No, it's on the left of the bungalow. Well, when we've got this sorted out, I'll take counsel son because it's, it's in, it, generally it's in his ward, so he can throw a, quite a lot of uh, information there. So, can we just can we just clarify where we are, um, left or right or whatever? I didn't go on the site bus, so um, this time, as, as members will be aware, but uh, just can we clarify that? Oh, it makes a lot of difference. We, yeah, it does because. It, we, <laughs> When we went and looked at it, unless we were showing the wrong house to have it built on the side, yes. we come, we walk to the front, the front of the bungalow to look into the bungalow to see for the right hand side of it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, could, and then I'll, could, I'll, we'll get this sorted out. Then I'll take <laughs> questions. Could, 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 could I, could I, could, go on could then. Go on then. <laughs> go on then. I'm I did intimate that it's your ward. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hall. Um, I think what's confusing members is 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 the distance between number nineteen, which you're saying on the left hand side is twelve hundred to the boundary fence, and on the right hand side is a meter to the boundary fence or to the hedge. So I think what Councillor Murphy is referring to is number. 17. 17 and the distance from the end of 17 to their boundary fence. Would that right. be right or not? Yes, it's, it's 17, that's where their extension will be on them. No, okay. no, it's okay. 21. No, 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 no. It is the right hand side of the bottom. Could we have the photo, the yeah. photo please? And I'll... Yes, thank you. Mr. Yep, Hall's photo is number 17 and 19. Yes. Let's have it up again, thank you. Yes. Sorry? Well, let, let's explain. Okay, well, let's just do this first and so see if we can. But the, the, the photo I've shown here is number 17. That's not the site. We're extending. This is on the opposite side. What I've tried to show is this bungalow where it is. We are that side of it. We're proposing an extension to that side of it. But I'm saying this side of that bungalow, there's already two story being approved in close proximity and key step forward. That's I'll right. just use that as an example. This is our extent, our site is over that side. So I'm trying to say. The street yeah. scene, this is what's here. There's already one right. set forward, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> have, you, are you, have you, I was going to take Councillor Murphy first. No, I, 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 I am, I am. Just what, let's just listen to what Councillor Murphy's got to say, please. I am sorry about this, but if you look at that side, when we walked along the, from the right hand side of that picture to that bungalow's gate there, the lady came out of the bungalow and we stood there looking and we stood looking at the Right hand, past her bungalow on the right hand side, where the next house is on the right. And that was the house we were shown, so it's going to have the extension for it. This house, this side, is nothing to do with the extension at all, nothing to do with the bungalow whatsoever. No, it's not. Yeah, that, yeah, that house there is nothing to do with it. The other side of that bungalow is actually already. Extension, yeah. yeah. Just the Illustrating this to show that, sorry, Mr. Hall is illustrating number 17. Take control of the meeting, please. To, sh to show that one side is built out the same as he's proposing. No, it's not. The other side is not built out. I was going to, it's not going to be built the out the same as what that side is. That's a miscount. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I think the confusion arises from the Ordnance Survey map because the Ordnance Survey map shows 17 set well in front of 19, which, looking to that, is not. 
because looking at the perspective of seven, uh, 19 to 17, they're the same, but on the drawing, they're not. On the uh, Ordnance <laughs> Survey drawing, the uh, 19 is set behind 17. So that's where the confusion arises. That picture there clarifies that 17 and 19 are in fact level at the front between the extension and the front of the uh, 19. What's confusing is 21, which is the other side of it, is the one that's going to have the extension proposed on it. But that picture is, is confusing the issue because it's not set out, out as the ordinance service sends it. Okay. Did you want to come in, Councillor Cornwall, then Councillor Marks? Did you want to throw some clarification? Well, I was on trying it? to. I was trying to get it sorted out, but I Absolutely. think actually, I think Councillor Scanlon has actually got there before me. The the ordnance survey, map, that one, yeah. clearly shows that nineteen is behind seventeen, very very clearly. Right. However, the one that we're talking about is twenty one. Yeah, but, which is forward of everywhere. Okay. In fact, it's forward of uh, 19 and 23, according to the Ordnance Survey. Oh, we're not looking at 23. So I think it's the, yeah, I think the agent is trying to say that the gap between this one and that one is okay because it's there. Well, in actual fact, Having had the, the problem of, of a 30 centimetre gap being approved by planners uh, um, in my own plot, um, yeah, it causes problem. The closer you are to a boundary, the more problem you have Obviously so. with uh, an application. And I think that's what you're trying to point out. Um, yeah, I mean, on the face of it, it does look very close. Okay, Councillor Sutton. Uh, so the question, Chairman, I wanted to ask before we got to bog Sorry, down in uh, front, back, rear, front, west, north, yeah, east, carry on. was that um, the question of, of uh, who, who, who actually owns the, the hedge? Is yeah. it owned by the... Okay. We do own that, yes. Okay. So, and, and it does say, does, sorry. No, carry on. It, sorry, it does say in the report that the next door neighbour has actually agreed yeah. to them taking the hedge down and putting the fence up anyway. It does, in 5.2. So, they are full, the neighbours are fully in agreement with this. The neighbour emailed in, we did not approach the neighbour, the our applicant did to obviously talk about the actual boundary. And he's emailed indirectly. It's on the public access. Yes, and he's yeah. happy. And he asked a fence to be put back up, which is what we're proposing. Yes. Okay. It's, it's so I think access, that's yes. where we need to be. Thank you very much. Any more questions at the end of the day for Mr. Hall? No, I think we've done it. Thank you very much. After all that, thank you for your perseverance. But it certainly was. It certainly wasn't clear, was it? So. Members, questions for officers, please. No. Okay. So, members. Councillor Sutton, thank you. Yeah, um, I'm happy to kick one off, Chairman. Um, yeah, thank you. There isn't any neighbour complaints. Um, the the neighbour at number nineteen actually um, has asked, and 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 you know, should we uh, agree that we should insist on a, a, a reasonable size fence being put up there? I I understand what the uh, officers are saying about the forty five degree uh, viewpoint, but actually. Out of that window to the right of the bungalow looking in, if you looked out there now, you wouldn't see any further than you do when the things get because the hedge is up there about two and a half meters at least. So, 
but they can't see anything now, I ain't going to be any different if the extension goes ahead. So in terms of street scene, my own personal view is that the proposal improves the street scene because it, 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 it makes the house symmetric. It now looks a little bit odd. Um, the, the, the front of the extension, the proposed extension, doesn't come any forwarder than the, you know, the current right-hand wing of the, um, the dwelling. So I personally don't have any issues with it because particularly on that side of the road, there, there isn't any development line. I mean, they go in and out like a, uh, like a you know, circular saw. Whereas opposed to the other side, that they are relatively in in line with one another, one or two sort of out, out of kilter, but most on the uh, even uh, the even number side are relatively um, in line, but certainly on 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 the odd number side, you know, they that they, they're not and n never will be. So I personally don't have any problem with, uh, if we'd have had a neighbor objection on my, my view might have been different, but I personally don't have any issues with um, the plan as it is because they're not gonna see any less once a development's done than they do now looking at a, a hedge, which is at least 2.5 meters high, if not more. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, we're still in debate. Councillor Sutton's kindly taken it or would anybody else want to add to this debate? No, Councillor Scannon, do you want to add anything to it? No, thank you very much. So the debate is now finished. Officers, would you like to add anything to it or make some comments? Um, yeah, very briefly, Chairman, um, as was presented by the case officer, um, you know, the you'll be bringing um, the side elevation of the property much closer to the boundary. Um, so it's going to be um, much more obvious to the occupiers of the adjacent bungalow um, in terms of um, the reduction in their outlook and quality of outlook, simply because you've got something that's going to be built as good as on the boundary um, and it's going to be a, a, a significant blank elevation in very in, in relatively close proximity so I, I, we think it will be detrimental to the amenity of the um the bungalow thank you chairman thank you so uh, protocol says i've been initially looking for a proposer to go with officer recommendation to refuse this planning uh, planning permission anybody want to propose with that no, obviously that has failed then. So I'm looking for a new proposal, please, to go against officer recommendation. Uh, we have Councillor Sutton, thank you. Yeah, I would like and to reasons, propose, thank you. On this occasion, we go against officer recommendation. Um, and I presume I'm going to get a second to be in as we didn't get a, a, a proposal for the last. Uh, uh, for the refuse, so when um, when and if I get a second, then I'll I'll cover the uh, the reasons. Chairman, is that with officers delegated authority for condition? For me, so Councillor French is second it. So Cat, so if you'd like to carry on, Councillor Sutton. So uh, apologies, there'll be two and sixteen. Uh, they want to ensure that. Um, the amenity of neighbour and users is not uh, compromised. Um, I think, given that the hedge is the height it is, had it not been that, I might have had a, a completely different opinion. But given that the hedge is the height that it is, at least I'll guess two and a half, probably more metres high. I don't see where this is going to be that demonstrably harmful as opposed to what they're looking at now. Um, and then in terms of street scene, um, my opinion is, and might not be shared by others, is that um, building it symmetrical actually improves the street scene rather than detracts from it. That's good. Uh, have you got any, anything to add to that, Councillor French? I don't hardly think you will have. 
So we've got a, a proposal to go against officers' recommendation to approve this application. Can I have a show of hands on that, please? Those against? No abstentions? No, no. You? No. Okay, so it's one abstention. That application has been approved. Yeah. 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 Right. Let's find my page and then we'll. Because we'll, I'll hand over to Danielle once again to present application FYR 22 stroke 1389F, agenda item number 30, and the last one today. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Agenda item 13 is for the erection of a dwelling on land southwest of 27A Wimbledon Road in Donington. The application is before members owing to the number of representations contrary to officer recommendation. May I please draw members' attention to the update report circulated in respect of this, um, containing a consultation response of no objection subject to conditions from the Highways Authority. This response, however, does not alter the officer recommendation. The application site is shown in red on the location plan and aerial photo. The site is garden land associated with the host dwelling at number 27A situated between the host dwelling and number 29 to the southwest. The application proposes the erection of a detached two-story um, excuse me, two-story dwelling to the west side of the existing dwelling. To facilitate room for the dwelling, the site is proposed to be separated from the existing dwelling by a new 1.8 meter fence to create a triangular area of land for the proposed dwelling and amenity space with new access proposed off Wimbledon Road. This separation will result in a constrained site resulting in the proposed dwelling appearing contrived and shoehorned into the space, forming an unsympathetic addition to the street scene with substandard amenity space for future occupiers. The scheme proposes a two-story three-bed dwelling with an atypical arrangement required showing to the constraint of the site, as shown on the above elevations and floor plan. The proposed street scene arrangement is shown and depicts the proposed dwelling in close proximity to the existing, given the constraints of the site. This proximity, the position of the dwelling to the southwest of the host dwelling, and a number of windows within the host dwelling facing the proposed dwelling, uh, which have been omitted from this street scene diagram, will give rise to issues of overbearing and overshadowing to occupants of the host dwelling, resulting in detrimental residential amenity. Photographs of the application site are now shown. The photos show the existing garden space to the west of the host dwelling, proposed to be utilised for the intended dwelling. These also show the number of windows within the host dwelling, whose outlook stand to be impeded by the development. So to summarise, this application seeks approval for the erection of a two-storey three-bed dwelling on garden land associated with 27A. The segregation of lands will result in a constrained site that will require a contrived arrangement, resulting in an unsympathetic development within the street scene. In addition, adverse overbearing and overshadowing impacts to the host dwelling will occur as a result of the development to the detriment of neighbouring amenity. Finally, the constrained nature of the application site will result in substandard private amenity space for the proposed development. Hence, the scheme is contrary to policies LP2 and LP16, and as such, should be refused. Um, thank you, Danielle. Uh, strangely enough, we haven't got any speakers on this application, so I'd now like to invite members to put questions, clarifications to officers. So, any of those to officers. Thank you. Do so. Oh. Uh, you were just you're being a little bit okay. So now then we'll we'll debate the application then, please, Councillor Sutton. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, postage stamp. Um, I, I mentioned at last meeting, um, and whilst the last one I referred to as a postage stamp could perhaps rightly be referred to as a penny black, and this one might be King Charles the Third size. So, but. A postage stamp, all the same. Uh, I think officers have got this one exactly right. 
um, and I shall be supporting their recommendations. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Hey, Councillor Sutton, Councillor Davis, please. Yes, I, I agree with Councillor Sutton. It is shoehorning. Um, when you stand at the road and look at it, it's unbelievable. You, you think, well, just how are they going to get it in there? But um, no, it's, it's, it's definitely, the plot is just too small. Councillor Council Muscanlon, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, totally agree with what's been said and with the officer's report. Um, I think they got this one absolutely right. There's too much of this trying to shoehorn uh, rabbit hutches into inappropriate spaces because the amenity space that will be left for the resident of that will be totally detrimental to their health and well-being. So I support the officers in this recommendation for as usual. Thank you, Councillor Cornwall, please. Well, I think I can see why the agent's not here. <laughs> I mean, to be quite honest, I looked at it and thought, they're having a laugh, surely. You know, I mean, it, it really is beyond, I think, anyone's expectation, for goodness sake. Um, yeah, I, officers, because in my opinion, have certainly got it right. Okay. I think I can see where this one's going. <laughs> I haven't got my crystal wall, but uh, there we go. So anybody want to add to the debate before I bring officers in? I think probably enough said. Uh, would you like to? No. So I'm looking, uh, obviously I'm looking to go with officers. Sorry? Me. Yep. I'm looking for a proposal to, to go against, to go with officer recommendation to refuse this. We've got Councillor Davis who wants to propose it. Um, Councillor Miss Cannon wants to second it. So. With that, can we have a show of hands on that proposal, please? Again, that's unanimous. Well, thank you very much. That concludes today's meeting. May I just remind you before you go, it's the 26th of April, next planning meeting, and it's at the Boathouse in Wisbech. So if we can make a note of that in your diaries. Super. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Be mindful, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube's still running. Thank you.